Inside the tomb, I thought I would die here today. He was Seo Juhian, 38 years old, a lowly civil servant, and if I had to say when everything became chaotic, it would be 15 years ago. In 2025, tombs began to appear all over the world, followed by large earthquakes. These things were later known to humans as relics. Relics changed the world 180 degrees, like the things written in ancient myths, fairy tales or epics, the relics contained great power within them, relics left their owners with countless different abilities. From then on, thousands of stories about changing lives when people own relics spread, people started risking their lives to hunt for relics. Although Juhian started his story much later than others, he finally got himself an amazing relic. The relic of the architect, it was the relic that gave the owner a lot of knowledge about tombs and other important information. Then a new law was enacted around the world. The bastards who collected a lot of relics started wanting to monopolize them. They created a new society by setting up laws that restricted the use of relics. And the only choice for the rest was to work for those greedy bastards. Thanks to his outstanding ability, Juhian got to work for a big company. The director Taejun said that his job would not be easy. His job included smuggling, stealing and spying, but the most important thing was tomb raiding. The tomb raiding team led by Ju Hian achieved great results and thanks to that Taejun became a powerful person. The more power he gained, the more criticism Ju Hian received. They said he was working for a tyrant, but that was not all. The next mission was a trap set by Taejun. He felt threatened by the superior skills that Ju Hian's team possessed. He was truly a shameless bastard. Right now, all of his teammates were in the belly of that snake. I thought this would be the end of the legend, but a voice suddenly spoke up. You are quite a talker, aren't you? He was also surprised that Juhian could hear him speak. But you are wrong, kid. Don't think this is the first time I can hear the voice from the relic. Even though I don't know which god you belong to, you better hurry up and deal with the snake and get me out of here. Do you really believe that you can survive with that body cut in half? Your body is even dying. This is the outcome for a lowly life. Don't talk as if you know me well. Ju Hian immediately spoke up to defend himself. Do you think I want to live like this? If I go back, I will kill that bastard by any means. It seemed like a dying wish, but then a light marked a change. I will give you one more chance to see if you can really take the throne this time. The one who spoke was the crow above. So that was a hero level or jade level relic. Ju Hian unconsciously opened his eyes again and found his legs intact as if there was no separation and the dying body from earlier was nowhere to be seen. What the hell is going on? The guys nearby were looking at him with half an eye. What is this crazy guy doing? Is this a dream or an illusion? Could it be that everything was caused by the crow? Ju Hian was thinking when a policeman in front of him told him to confess everything quickly. Hurry up, we have to go back. It's only the beginning of 2025, but the work is overwhelming. What? Is this 2025? Ju Hian's head was filled with countless questions. And when he looked at the calendar on the wall, he could finally be sure. On January 1, 2025, he had a fight with that kid and was dragged to the police station. So the words of the crow were true. I went back 15 years. If this is January 2025, then the world hasn't changed yet. I can start collecting relics sooner than anyone else with the knowledge of the architect. It seems like this is the beginning of a legend. While he was happy to change his life, a woman from afar scolded Juhian. Are you stupid or something? Why are you spacing out? Answer the police officer so they can do their work. And you even hit my son who is in grade 9. If he has any problem, you won't be able to take responsibility. Just like that, Juhian had barely enjoyed a few seconds before he got scolded and didn't have time to touch his face. It turned out that everything was planned by that brat. He remembered that at first he had provoked Juhian to fight and then followed him around, making him angry. And before he could touch a single hair, he immediately rolled on the ground and played the victim. So there was no other way but to compensate. But what to do now when there was no penny in his pocket? Of course, after that Ju Hian was sent to jail. But thinking about it, it didn't matter. Getting a sentence when the relic was about to appear had no meaning at all. Once that happened, the whole world would plunge into chaos. The thing to do now was to quickly make money and become a tycoon. But before he could finish thinking, a message in front of him made Ju Hian's eyes widen in surprise. Tomb Raider Ju Hian, a petty pickpocket who couldn't even lift a feather. Could it be that this was caused by the relic? It must have been that crow's doing. Hey crow, are you watching me? With that thought, Ju Hian opened his mouth and screamed like a madman. Then right after that, more screens appeared. All the basic information and current stats were copied in front of him. 
Could this be a game window? You damn crow, do you think my life is your game? Like that, Juhian swung his fists in vain, knowing that what he did was useless. New mission, restore the four basic skills of Tomb Raider. Juhian looked closely at the mission that was just given, while the policeman outside thought he was crazy, so now it was clear that he was the only one who could see these symbol boards. He could also see every detail of everything around him within a radius of one meter. It was exactly like the skill from his architect relic. All the skills were displayed on this board, right? If so, then there was no need to look for the architect relic anymore. But on the other hand, what was the crow and the relic planning to do after giving him this new power? Usually, relics don't help people for no reason. As he was thinking, someone outside also waved to Juhian. A few minutes later, he was successfully bailed out. He learned that the man was John Wu, a detective who was also his adoptive brother who took him in when he was an orphan. The two brothers were chatting when Ju Hian suddenly asked seriously. He wondered if his brother had heard anything about the unusual incidents or announcements related to superpowers lately. He was told that there was nothing special. Although relics had gradually appeared, there was no one who used relics. They said goodbye and went home. The information from his brother told Ju Hian one thing that he was the most capable person in the world to collect relics. He was the only one who still possessed the power of a relic, but the current problem was still money. The best relics were the relics in North America and Europe. With a poor bastard like him, where would he get the money to pay for the plane ticket? But anyway, before that, he had to deal with these gangsters first. The two of them also needed a place to make money. The leader was Kyung Ti. He was a street thug but now worked as an art broker with his sister Kyung Ju. Of course, he was nothing good. When he was in high school, Ju Hian worked for their company but was not treated well. A kid like him had to work until he was 20 years old there, without any respect from others. But now everything was different. After the loving scolding, Ju Hian quickly knocked down one of his underlings. Hey, you trash, go tell your boss that I don't work for him anymore. And before I go, you better spit out the salary you owe me. As soon as they heard Ju Hian's words, the people in front laughed out loud. It seems like this guy has lived long enough, guys. Say that again, you dog. He shouted Kyung Ti's name and swung his fist at Ju Hian. Here you go. With a basic punch, Ju Hian showed him who was the boss here. The two underlings behind saw the boss get hit and rushed to get their share. Of course, right after that, they all lay on the ground. Now slowly feel it because the world will be harder to live in. Ju Hian's words angered the boss Kyung Ti. He pulled out a knife and prepared to send our main character away and Ju Hian glanced at him and realized that the knife in his hand was not normal. Wasn't that a relic? He really wondered how that bastard got it. As he knew, most relics would appear as tombs to attract people, but some relics secretly hid in human society. He didn't know how they got a relic, but now it was his. With that thought, Ju Hian easily dodged the first slash. Now tell me, you seem to have guts to use a knife with me. So from now on, I will replace you guys with this knife. Holding the relic in his hand, Ju Hian immediately felt how to use its power. So the knife allowed the owner to see inside the opponent's body. The two underlings punched but had no effect. Where did he go? Here you go, guys. Or slashes one by one scratched their bodies. Besides the ability to see through, it was also quite strong. Ju Hian used it for the first time but couldn't help admiring the sharpness of the knife. And now spit out the money if you don't want to die. At the headquarters of QNP Art Company. Kyung Ju was also listening to the phone call from his underlings about how they were beaten by Ju Hian and robbed of all their money. How stupid do you want to lie? You should find a more reasonable reason, right? Who would believe that that chicken that hasn't been chopped yet could beat you guys? But it's true, sister, yesterday he was still a guy who didn't know how to fight, but today he's completely different. His eyes are full of murderous intent as if he wants to eat us alive. As for the losses, we lost all the money in the bank, and the goods that were ready to trade. It was also because he complained that the money was too little and wanted to search for the stuff, so I had no other choice but to give him the statue. He was really greedy when he exhorted the stuff and then left right away. We have to get it back immediately, you idiot. Kyung Ju was furious when he heard his brother explain. The next morning at an old pawn shop, this statue probably wasn't worth 50,000 won, you'd better take it home. Ju Hian was busy with his junk trading business as soon as he woke up. He thought this would be a big deal, but he didn't expect the statue to be so torn. He remembered that the face of Kyung when he gave it out was very strange. With that expression, this statue should be worth millions of won, right? 
As he was depressed on his way back, a message appeared with the main character's halo, the detective skill was activated. You have detected a suspicious point from the Buddha statue, well that's enough, you go away and use me. As expected, this genuine statue couldn't be worth only 50,001. Now let's see what's inside. As he said, Juhian took out a knife and prepared to do something. Like that, the statue became dust with a few slashes. Only to see a bottle of something inside, could this be a laxative? With that thought, Juhian's face was no different from a smuggler. Thinking back, those guys own hundreds of art workshops. If each workshop was trading drugs, me Juhian, you should know that the reward for reporting the stimulant is 100 million won. On the other side of Kyung's sisters, things didn't look good. Kyung Ju was being scolded by his partner for not seeing the Buddha statue yet. And that wasn't all. The reporter Kyung Tae also just came back and there was something strange. Sister, we've been discovered, then a man behind him came forward and introduced himself as a policeman. We received a report that you are organizing the illegal trade of stimulants. Of course, Kyung Ju denied this and said that there were only artworks here. Then explain why this thing isn't a statue of yours. There must be countless statues like that in the warehouse, right? Seeing the situation messed up, Kyung Ju wondered if they knew the location of his warehouse. But he also reassured himself that they couldn't get past the encryption. I don't know what you're talking about. With that thought, Kyung Ju quickly replied, If you don't have valid evidence, please don't blame the innocent. As soon as he finished, the retribution came. On the other side, someone else reported that they had found 600 words containing stimulants inside. What? How did you open my warehouse door? She must be very angry now, but how could she know that Ju Hian had superpowers? Specifically, it was his super memory. An extraordinary memory, that was the only talent of a useless person like him. That was also the reason why Mr. Ju wanted to use him to work in the pile of goods full of codes in the warehouse. Thanks to that, all the codes had been unlocked. Everything was going according to plan. The person who reported and assisted in arresting the stimulant criminals would be rewarded a lot of money. That would be the start of the journey to collect relic. But before that, there was something to do first. A few seconds later, someone wanted to talk to the criminal Mr. Ju. Is there anyone else here besides Ju Hian? Hello, ma'am. You should have treated me better from the start. And you should also change your bowl every six months. Enjoy your vacation in prison. This guy's blood is not that bad after all. That night, in a corner of Seoul, Ju Hian was on his way home. But something was wrong here. Where is my house? The apartment where Ju Hian lived was suddenly covered by a tomb. It must be a tomb created by Relic. Below, the people living in the apartment complex still did not understand what was happening. Children were crying while adults were trying to blame others. Only Ju Hian knew what was going on here. If he remembered correctly, his roommate had called him to inform him that the apartment had disappeared. But only a few hours later, everything was back to normal. It meant that someone among the people here was the culprit. He was the one who had conquered the relic in the apartment complex. At this moment, in front of him, a young man was arguing with an officer and the situation seemed very tense. Do I look like I'm joking? If you ask me nonsense again, I'll shoot you. But before he finished, the officer received a kick from Ju Hian. Because the person just now was his roommate, Kim Jong Il. The officer also crawled up later. He did not blame Ju Hian but instead apologized for losing control and pointing a gun at a civilian. As for Ju Hian, he did not say much and went straight to the point. Explain why there are soldiers here. Aren't these things usually handled by the police? But in front of Ju Hian's many questions, the officer said that this was classified information. You better tell me because we live in the nearby apartments. Ju Hian knew he had to dig out the information because the government army might be his opponent. If you don't tell me, I will report that a soldier dared to point a gun at a civilian. The plan succeeded. The soldier said that they only followed the orders of their superiors to come here and investigate the thing that had just appeared and excavated. The people did not need to worry because the army would ensure their safety. Moreover, we also invited foreign experts to come, so everything will soon be stable. With those words, everything was clear. Ju Hian also pretended to thank and quickly left. On one side nearby, a girl was talking to her colleague about the prison event. Linda Walker was a CIA agent from the U.S. The conversation of the two Korean Navy officers invited her to help in the prison event, but they did not know about the relics. However, the plan did not go as smoothly as they had planned. Abe Kyosher was a member of the Japanese excavation team and it seemed that this Japanese organization also wanted to get involved with the relic that had just appeared. Like that, 
two people representing two organizations started to argue about who would own the relic. They didn't know that there was a surprise character who was secretly watching everything. In 2025, when tombs began to appear all over the world, at first the existence of relic in tombs was only considered as signs. At that time, only a few countries understood the real meaning behind the existence of relic. The US and Japan were among the few countries. They began to conduct secret research on relic and search in other countries as well. Of course, with this action, the Koreans also wanted to take the relic that had just appeared, but they were very amateurish when they wanted to blow up the relic to enter inside. As he thought, Jian went to an area near the tomb, this was the ancient tomb inscription. In plain words, it was a brief introduction of relic to the world. If you could decipher it, everything from the entrance to the details inside would be displayed. Well, if that's the case, you can decipher it. In this world, not many people can decipher the ancient language, but it's different for someone who owns the architect relic. It was too simple for Jian. In just a few seconds, he found the entrance to the tomb and unlocked another skill of Tomb Raider. He currently possessed the skills of detective and linguistics, meaning that he only needed to learn two more skills, then the four basic skills of Tomb Raider would be unlocked. But don't pretend to be cool and wave your hand, brother, people will think you're crazy. A few minutes later, in a nearby area, with the symbol of the language here, it must be the entrance to the relic. Now let's start hunting. As soon as he swung his knife, a beam of light shot straight up into the sky. What the hell is that? The group on this side, Linda and Kyosher, also guessed that someone had opened the gate of the tomb. You guys stay here and watch, the second explosion could happen at any time, so protect the people as best as you can. By doing this, Kyosher didn't let any Korean soldiers get close to the tomb area. Even Linda had to admire his cunning. After a few minutes of running, they also arrived at the place where the light appeared. This gate was so bright that the naked eye couldn't even see the bottom. By dropping a stone down, they could tell that there was water below. So what are you waiting for? Kyosher was not afraid of death and jumped down to get the upper hand. Juhian also realized that there were rats following him. Well, just let them have some trouble. Back to the other two, Linda had also successfully descended. Grandfather Kyosher suffered so much, but she was so relaxed. But before they could do anything else, streams of water rushed out from inside. What the hell? Where did all this water come from? Even if they gave them more gold, they wouldn't know that someone had gone ahead of them. On Juhian's side, he had reached the center of the tomb. Now I only have this left, so I'll just use it. As he thought, he threw the knife straight into the central pool of water. And then a python popped its head up to greet him. Oh miserable soul who dropped the object. Now answer me, is this gold or silver knife yours? Does it sound like some story, brothers? That's right, it is. The relic in this tomb is called the Golden Axe and the Silver Axe. It is based on the fairy tale of the goddess and the little servant. Of course, Juhian's answer was that neither of them was his. Then is this yours? The python took out the knife that Juhian had dropped earlier. Yes, it is mine. If you answer like that, you will not only get the knife back, but also get the other two relics as well. But can I check if it is really my weapon? With the python's nod, he slowly picked up the knife and gave it a slash. The python itself didn't understand what the human had just done. Why did you do that when you were about to complete the challenge? You should know that I never believe in relic. Juhian continued to explain that because of the relics, you guys were never normal. Who can be sure that what we receive will be a relic with some power? The truth is that the owner of the golden axe and silver axe turned into a serial killer in his previous life. A fake relic with a curse will be what the conqueror of this tomb will receive. At this point, a death match is inevitable. Juhian jumped on the giant snake and started attacking. Pay for the sins of the person who went even though you have not committed any sins. After passing through the tomb full of traps, if you pass the challenge of the relic, you will receive a reward. Then the relic and the user develop a mutual relationship, but that is only the surface. Relics always hate humans because their design and original purpose are to harm them. After using the relic for a while, humans often get sick. Therefore, those who own relics also often look for a relic to heal their wounds to limit the damage. And for a regressor who understands relics like Ju Hien, the above theories are useless. He is not the one who will maintain a relationship with the relic. We will assert our dominance and force people to obey. To control the relic, humans need to have some talent. Otherwise, they will be swallowed up. That talent is divided into three main groups by scholars. The first group is sociality, the ability to form from the relationship with the relic. The second group is dominance, the power to command and control the relic. 
the last group is compatibility, the strong emotion between the user and the relic. They were created for each other. Most people want to enhance their social skills. That is the fastest and easiest way to use the relic. But that is also a brutal path. Because when the relic is compatible with the owner, it will start to emit poison as mentioned before. As for Juhian's current actions, everyone must know the path that he follows. He uses violence and makes relics obey him. That is the way to avoid damage for those who are not born with natural abilities. After a few minutes of struggle, he finally got the golden axe in his hand. A new skill of Tomb Raider was unlocked, the skill to excavate rank F tombs. He didn't have much time to celebrate when he noticed someone coming in. They were Linda and Kyosher who escaped from the flood. It seemed that the Japanese man had done a lot of research when he knew what he had to do next. Without saying anything, Kyosher threw a treasure into the water. With the eager eyes of the two people on the other side, Juhian also had his own thoughts. He had a feeling that they would be in his way in the future, so he planned to kill them here. But just as he was about to act, the information about the knife appeared. The funeral knife of the Egyptians. The maximum number of uses left is 50 Egyptians. The maximum number of uses left is 54 slash 100. Well, then he decided to spare their lives for now. Back at the water, Kyosher was sweating profusely when he saw nothing happen. Why was there no reaction at all? The prophecy said that we had to throw something down. It turned out that Japan had a prophetic relic. But that didn't matter anymore. Someone had stolen the relic, meaning that many people knew about them. But wasn't it too late to discover something unusual now? Juhian wondered what the two people would do if the tomb collapsed. As soon as he said that, he used the relic to close the tomb. A few minutes later, at a sewer near the apartment complex. Who would have guessed that the exit of the tomb was connected to the sewer? As expected, when Juhian returned, the tomb was gone. At first, everyone was confused, but then everyone went home. As for Juhian, of course, both of them had to go home and eat a big meal. At the same time, in a nearby place, Kyosher had also successfully escaped and was listening to information from his organization. They said there was another prophecy that someone in Korea had taken it. And there was one more important thing. It said that the person who took the relic would be the one who swallowed the whole world. On the other hand, our main character was also busy. He wanted to find information about his mortal enemy. The name of Director Taejun who was running the TKBM company. Although he had the ability to search in all languages, his public information was very little. The next morning at a headquarters of QNB company. Inside, Kyungju's subordinates were searching the warehouses and of course there was nothing left. All the goods had been confiscated and the boss had been arrested, so we couldn't work anymore. The blonde guy was cursing Juhian. It's all because of that bastard. I'm sure I won't let this go. Seeing the two subordinates who still had their asses kicked made this old man delusional. Right then, there was a phone call. As soon as he mentioned it, the caller was none other than Juhian. Why is he calling me at this time? So after a while of struggling, the blonde guy finally gathered the courage to answer the phone. What took you so long to answer? Juhian didn't say much more and went straight to the main issue. He asked if they were still trading illegal goods. I know you guys haven't signed the contract termination yet so you haven't stopped trading, right? If so, I want you guys to go to Midas for a trip. Midas is the largest secret auction site in the world located in Las Vegas. Many great treasures of the world are concentrated here. In his previous life, if he remembered correctly, Taejun had participated in the auction here and got many powerful relics. And of course, Juhian's action this time was to collect information about him. As soon as they heard the unreasonable requests from Juhian, the three old men refused. Don't talk nonsense like that. How can we get into Midas? But this main character is a villain, so he doesn't care about that. He doesn't need to know how, they must get in there. And if they don't follow orders, they know the consequences. I will tell you the details later, so just wait there. With just a few short sentences, Juhian got himself three henchmen. The matter related to Taejun was handled. It was time to hunt for relics. Late that night in Seoul, South Korea. The news reported that in the Yongdong district, a 40-year-old woman tried to commit suicide by burying herself alive. It sounded normal, but Juhian wondered if it was a sign of the tomb. Suddenly, someone angrily told Juhian to move aside and let him out. And this old man was none other than Kyosher from the Japanese excavation team. Well, he understood then. If this bastard was here, it meant that a tomb was about to appear around this area. With that thought, Juhian fired back a barrage of Japanese that scared Kyosher to death. He thought he was Korean, but it turned out he was Japanese. Oh, so you are Japanese too? 
Sorry for the rude behavior just now, because I had a bad day today. What are you saying? I don't understand. I only spoke Korean just now. Damn, this guy has a lying language system. Juhian didn't care how Kyosher cursed. The only thing he paid attention to was the relic that he was carrying. He didn't even bother to hide its power. He was such an amateur. Then Juhian deliberately but unintentionally bumped into Kyosher. After showing his skills as a thief, he could feel the relic in the shape of a small bracelet. If he stole it right now, he would be exposed, so Juhian decided to wait for the next time. Hey, you should pay attention to your ID card. You just dropped it. Kyosher quickly grabbed it back, because revealing his information would be disastrous. Did he see his information? If he revealed that he was a member of the Japanese excavation team, it would be a big problem. But before he could finish worrying, a sudden earthquake interrupted their conversation. What else was there besides the tomb appearing? Juhian quickly left while Kyosher's father was still smiling smugly because he was about to get a new item. Hello, the prison tomb has appeared and caused chaos as predicted, but the voice from the other end of the line made him lose his smile. We just received another prophecy. The person who took the gold and silver axes is also nearby. And with the intelligence of a veteran agent, Kyosher guessed who that person was. That bastard was probably the one mentioned in the prophecy. Juhian's side also got closer to the epicenter, but it felt like someone was bloodthirsty here. It must be a more difficult relic than the last time. Stop right there. Kyosher also caught up and pointed his gun at him. Open your backpack right now before I shoot. But before he could do anything else, an event made Juhian's entire notification board pop up. Warning, a terrible pressure is approaching you. Right after that message, a beam of light shot up from under their feet. A few seconds later, they saw that many people were pulled into the tomb. He remembered these weapons. Juhian had seen them in his previous life. This was the tomb of the Japanese relic katana called Miramesa. Miramesa was a famous swordsmith in Japan during the Miromachi period. All the swords he made were very famous and considered as masterpieces. During that time, the relationship between Miramesa and the incumbent shogun Tokugawa was not good. Miramesa's entire family was killed by the katana he forged. After that incident, Tokugawa also ordered the destruction of all the swords of Miramesa. Since then, there were rumors that Miramesa's swords were cursed katana. So this was the type of relic he was about to face. A relic that contained a lot of hatred for humans. Very soon after that, the attack of the relic also began. The skin of everyone in the tomb was damaged by the impact of the relic. But it seems that things are not easy here. I told you not to move. Now open the bag and dump everything inside out. With each sound of Kyosher, all eyes were on the two people. In their eyes, Juhian was being robbed. But I don't think he was easy to deal with. Juhian was also tough when he told the other guy to shoot him if he wanted. Damn, don't challenge me. Kyosher decided to give the kid in front a shot in the leg to teach him some manners. And then boom, the gun exploded on the spot. See, I told you, didn't I? I don't know why, but right now Kyosher is screaming and crying. Juhin explained that inside the tomb, modern weapons would be useless. Because the relic did not want humans to easily get it. How do you know that? Then the one who took the golden and silver axes must be you. Before the opponent's question, Juhin did not hesitate to admit. Because right now Kyosher was being taken care of by the zombies of the tomb. Now lie still, because the traps here are not easy to deal with. After a fight between two people, the crowd around was curious about how to handle it. A man who could understand Japanese stepped up and talked to Kyosher. He learned that he was from the Japanese excavation team. I am a well-trained person, so I will take everyone out safely. Juhian was also excited about the item he had just stolen. Earlier, while fighting, he had managed to slip his hand into the old man's body and mix a few things. A small bracelet and a box of rice cakes. This must be a relic from a Korean folktale. Two brothers became the moon and the sun. The tiger killed their mother to eat more rice cakes. When it was about to kill the two brothers, a rope came down from heaven to save them. Although it was not a powerful relic, it would be quite useful. At the same time, as he put the item into the system, it also notified Juhian that he had learned a new skill of Tomb Raider. Finger Nimble Rank F. Increase your rate of stealing relics from others. With the awakening of this skill, the four basic skills of Tomb Raider were unlocked. You have become a true Tomb Raider. The mission is completed. You will receive the reward after leaving the tomb. He thought the main character of our story was happy, but Juhian's face was clearly bitter. The system from that damn thing treated him like a character in a game. Ignoring that, there were countless screams of despair ahead. Those cries for help came from below, right? That's right, right below him was a trap. 
Below, a student was unconscious and attacking everyone crazily. Juhian looked and realized that she had been possessed. Anyone who touched that knife would be possessed. You should know that once you are possessed, it is very hard to escape. A trap was set up with the nature of destroying everything. The more people died in the pit below, the more the bridge above would be developed. To put it briefly, its name was a sacrifice trap. He said that and then asked down who had brought everyone into the trap below. Was he a Japanese guy, or was there anyone else here? Someone explained that after pulling him out of the zombies, he led them all here and then sang a strange song to escape. He also said that everyone had to die here to protect the secret. Along with the voice of the person below, Ju Hien quickly rushed down to their place. The female student who was being controlled ran to him as soon as she saw some movement. But you chose the wrong person to play with. With just a string, Ju Hien easily subdued her. The relic knife also fell out right after that. Lucky for you, whoever you are, now go and kill all the people in front of you. As soon as he picked up the knife a voice kept talking to Ju Hien. Oh my god, it turned out to be a C-class relic knife, it was really a useless relic. Ju Hien couldn't be more humiliated as he spoke and threw the knife away. Now coming back to me, the divine string, Ju Hien retracted the string and turned to tell everyone that they could follow him. Elsewhere inside the tomb, Ju Hien was smiling as if he had hit the jackpot when he found the relic room. So what are you waiting for, the Mira Mesa sword will belong to me now. But his smile didn't last long as he saw him smashing everything in frustration. All the swords here are fake, where is the Miramesa sword? But as they say, misfortune never comes alone. The commoners who were rescued by Ju Hien also flocked to follow his instru- flocked to follow his instructions. This is playing with me, countless curses and shoes stamped deeply on Kyosher's face. You bastard, you can only be you, who else is here? I can't believe you couldn't identify the relic even though you came here first to locate it, Golden Eagle. As soon as he activated the divine power of the golden eagle, a sword reacted to it. A relic that was hiding its power under the shape of a broken sword. A stupid human is trying to dominate me. The voice from the sword rose, making the whole room panic. If you want to use my power, you have to sacrifice ten people. I need their blood to restore my original state. Meaning that at least ten people here have to die to escape the relic. In the rest of the story, everyone knows it. As usual Ju Hien played the trick of controlling instead of compromising. These damn relic weapons always like to challenge others. Remember that the one being challenged here is not me but you. If you don't submit to me, I will break you into pieces. Along with the dazzling flashes of light conflicting between the two, the result was then obtained. The tomb is completed. Everyone can climb up this rope and get out. But you are not allowed. You plan to sneak into the crowd and escape. After a while of interrogation, Kyosher also tried everything to beg for mercy. If I leave here, I will invite you to join my team. You can earn billions of yen from the Japanese relic excavation team. We also own the future guidance relic, so your life will be easier. Wouldn't it be better to say that sooner? You can use the rope, but you have to be the last climber. They are idiots who open their eyes as soon as they see money. A few minutes later, Ju Hien and another person were the last ones left. Can you explain more clearly? About the group that uses the prophecy relic. I want to understand more before working with them. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. They are the famous TKBM group. Oh, is that so? With a cunning smile, Kyosher also quickly got a kick from our main character. It seems that he wanted to live too much, so he spit out the information very fast. But anyway, thank you for this information. A few hours later, at a nearby restroom, you bastards are the ones who need to shut up. Ju Hien didn't understand why he was arguing with his relics. And the leader of them, everyone knows it's you, right Miramesa? Now drink some water and shut your mouth. Sit there and cultivate your mind, okay? After dealing with the leader, Ju Hien finally had time to look at the wound on his hand. This is the consequence of dominating the relic. To get the relic, you usually have to pass its challenge. But by breaking the rules, you had to suffer damage when trying to dominate it. Of course, the stronger the relic, the more resistant it is. But this is the only way right now. If you don't dominate them, they will betray their owner one day. He was having a headache when suddenly the system appeared. You have escaped the tomb and now it is time to reward you. Choose one of two. The path of domination or the path of blessing. Are you telling me to choose like an experiment, you rotten crow? Don't think that just because my hand is like this, I will stop what I'm doing. I choose the path of domination. I thought something amazing would happen, but it didn't. After receiving the reward, nothing changed at all. The only thing that appeared was a silver pill in Ju Hien's hand. According to the information received, this is a consumable relic. Well, whatever it is, 
just put it in your mouth for now. With that thought, he immediately put the silver pill in his mouth and started to return. Of course, he couldn't forget the Miramesa in the toilet. He regretted throwing it in there, but the surprise was still behind. The pill started to take effect. The wound on Juhian's hand was healing. Was the pill just a relic of recovery? Actually, it wasn't. As he read from the system, his body absorbed a source of energy and built a new skill called endurance. To put it simply, the author is buffing our weak main character, brothers. At the same time, on TV, there was news about the earthquake in Yongdong district. A strange architecture appeared in the city center and trapped 50 people inside. According to the witnesses, there were many dangerous traps inside. Even one of the people there tried to harm the others. The Korean government contacted Japan and was waiting for their response. What the hell are you doing? On the Japanese side, the senior officials were questioning the leader of the Japanese excavation team. Currently, the information about the relics was spreading and Japan was also in trouble. The bastard who caused everything was dead, but that was not enough for him. At that time, the leader Mori also explained that he received another prophecy related to Korea. Although he was not sure yet, he could completely locate the Tomb Raider. Besides, the scholars and the team were also trying to find a way to use the prophecy relic without being the owner. Back in Korea, Ju Hian was still confused about the skill he received yesterday. He remembered that in his previous life, humanity had entered the era of searching for healing relics. If he really had a skill similar to the healing relic, it would be great. But the question was what the fruit would get when it gave away these things? Answer me quickly. Ju Hian looked at the sky and shouted for the fruit to appear instead of talking through the screens. Of course, everything he said was useless. Just then, a phone call from Mr. Blonde came. After checking the entire list of auction participants, there were three suspicious people with the name Jika. That meant Ju Hian had to go to Las Vegas himself to check. You have been marked by a rank S relic. It must be from the prophecy relic, right? The book of future guidance of Prince Shotoku. He was a politician and also the person who handled the court affairs during the Asuka period. Although there was no evidence for the book, its existence was always considered a myth. It was the first relic that integrated itself into human society. Instead of creating a tomb, it chose its own owner, Sasaki Duka. She was the person designated by the prophecy book as the owner. Since then, the book has always followed Sasaki wherever she went, whether it was burning or throwing it away. It always appeared in front of her and that scared Sasaki to death. But then the Japanese government soon got information about Sasaki's prophecy book and offered to support the Japanese excavation team. Thanks to that, Sasaki's family quickly escaped from the difficult situation and started a life of enjoyment. Along with the help of the prophecy relic, the Japanese excavation team collected countless relics. But there is no gain without pain. Because Sasaki skipped studying, she could not understand all the instructions of the prophecy book. And later, when someone used this relic better and led to Sasaki's death. As for Ju Hian, although he did not intend to interfere with this relic, he could not stand it anymore because he was involved. And they also conspired with director Taejun. Sasaki, it's time to read the prophecy relic, dear. As usual, Sasaki would have to spend some time reading the relic to see if anything happened or not. But unlike every day, this time she was really scared by what the book wrote. It said that you would be killed, it must be him, that Korean name. With the consolation of the others, Sasaki sat back at the table to continue reading. If the prophecy speaks of death, there must be some related things to solve it. A person who can see the future like you can never lose. At the same time at Haneda Airport, Japan, after more than an hour of flying, Juhian finally arrived. And the people of the Japanese excavation team were also busy preparing when the prophecy said that the Korean guy was about to act. We have to act first by any means. Contrary to the hustle and bustle on the other side, the main character here was enjoying sushi. I wonder when they will attack me. I will constantly threaten her so they will probably act soon. The future diary will surely tell her the curses that I wrote. In addition, relic cannot be identified specifically, so just act slowly. As soon as he said it, the soldiers outside found his location. According to their plan, Sasaki would disguise herself as an employee to approach the person inside. If the user of the prophecy relic looks into the eyes of the other person, they will be able to track him accurately. He doesn't know what you look like, so don't worry. With those words of encouragement, the door of the room slowly opened. Here is your order, sir. Oh my god, he is so handsome. I wonder if Miss Sasaki is going to meet the enemy or find a boyfriend. It would be a waste if they killed this handsome guy. As for Ju Hian, he also knew who he was meeting. 
she must be the user of the prophecy relic. That bastard was carrying a weapon. Sasaki was in danger and asked everyone to rush in and rescue her. But before the people outside could do anything, Sasaki took the initiative to close the door. Can I be your fan, sir? I'm so crazy about you. I'm ready to die for you. With Sasaki's incomprehensible action, the soldiers were trying to figure out what was going on. With their super intelligence, they finally understood the problem. The girl was talking to the Korean guy. She must be trying to get information before he noticed. But they overestimated her too much. She was busy writing on Google Translate to make her appa understand her. What is going on here? She wrote something that Google couldn't translate. Luckily, I have the skill of mastering languages, or else I would have failed to confess. But never mind, this is a perfect opportunity anyway. Juhin didn't know what he wrote, but Sasaki seemed to enjoy it a lot. Did you hear anything? Let's get ready to go in. Before they could act, they were outplayed by that Korean guy. Don't worry, I'm just blinding them a bit so we can have some private space to go on a date. Although he didn't know what was going on, Sasaki believed that he had the upper hand. Since he looked into her eyes, he could read her future. The only bad thing was that he forgot the prophecy book at home. It probably wasn't life-threatening. With a sword blade at his neck, Sasaki could only comfort himself. Now hurry up and bring out her phone. Of course, right after that, it also became a pile of scrap under Juhian's feet. Be quiet, I just want to get rid of the things that those people use to track us. Now tell me, do you really think I don't know who you are? You are the one who uses the prophecy relic, right? A moment later, the two also started a date in a couple coffee shop. But this date was a bit strange. Juhin didn't say much and went straight to the main point. Leave everything you saw in there in this book. Sasaki immediately replied that he had forgotten it at home. But don't think you can hide it from me. Juhin rolled up his sleeve and said that he just had to touch this tattoo and the book would appear. Who would have guessed that the user of the prophecy relic for so many years didn't know such a basic thing? Then Sasaki diligently worked on his writing. Remember to write it fully and miss one line and you're dead. Working under this pressure, who can bear it? Sasaki decided to play hard, bear it. Sasaki decided to play hard and said he would give the prophecy relic to Juhin as long as he spared him. The deal is good, but no, kid. As you know, this relic is rank S and even higher than Muramesa by one level. So if you try to force it, you might lose your life as well. At the same time, the army from Japan had arrived outside, quickly checking all the exits and searching every room. The commotion caused by those people also made Juhin realize they had come. How much have you written in the book? When he knew that Sasaki was about to finish the first one, he thought it was enough and told her to stop. Now it's time, right? This is the only way for you to survive. The Miramesa blade quickly pierced the prophecy book, making its owner Sasaki faint right after. At the same time, whether by accident or on purpose, the soldiers also just stepped in. What happened to the prophecy book? Before the commander's question, Juhin casually said that he had destroyed it. The captain was furious and ordered his subordinates to shoot at the man in front of him. Try shooting if you can. As he spoke, Juhian threw something up in the air. It belongs to Kyosher, so I'm giving it back to you. I heard it tastes so good that you'll die, so enjoy it slowly. Then, right after that sound, a strange fragrance spread throughout the room. That's my machi, give it to me. The two soldiers no longer cared about rank and dove in to fight for the food with the commander. You bastards, wake up. This is my machi, so you have to know your place. You would think he was still sane, but he was also crazy, my friends. The story after that doesn't need to be described much, ha? Huh? A few hours later, Juhian was on the plane. As for the relic before, it was a part of the pair of relics of Kyosher. The machi of the maid. It was a relic that seduced the enemy and allowed the user to teleport instantly. Anyway, let's take a look at the instructions of the future prophecy book. After a while of observation, the basic information was also in Juhian's head. He was heading straight to the underworld full of greed in the next month. There was a sign related to the biggest disaster in the world that was about to start. According to Juhian's guess, the place that the prophecy was referring to was Las Vegas in the US. That was where Sung Woo and his team had been sent by him before to investigate. Among the three people who registered the name Juhian, it was very likely that old T, Jun was one of them. As for the biggest disaster in the world, it must be it. It was an event that described how relics appeared all over the world. After that event, everyone knew about the existence of the tomb. And the number of people who discovered relics also increased rapidly. But according to his memory, the disaster didn't start that early. Not only that, in the next line of the prophecy, 
it said that the God who understood greed would offer to cooperate with, it meant that a relic of God's level would appear at the auction, the director would aim for it to become more powerful in the future, if so, he had to do what a thief should do, at the meeting room of the Japanese relic excavation team, all the senior officials inside were depressed after receiving the bad news, Sasaki had regained consciousness, but he was still very weak, while the prophecy relic had been completely destroyed, team leader Mori and his subordinates shot each other while performing the mission, after a while of silence, the chairman couldn't stand it anymore and cursed, it was really a ridiculous thing, the thieves couldn't catch one and let him escape, while he was cursing them, someone else was also reporting the whole situation here, confirmed that the future relic was destroyed, the Japanese defense force also suffered heavy losses after the surprise attack. The special thing is that only one person caused all this. She is a member of TKBM, the organization that Ju Hien is looking for clues. According to their conversation, it seems that they want to recruit the person who caused this incident into the organization. If you can destroy a rank S relic, you must have formidable power. Although it is a bit dangerous, there is nothing that money cannot solve. In Las Vegas, USA, after many hours of flying, Ju Hien was now at a luxury hotel in Las Vegas. And the person he was waiting for was none other than the leopards who had come here a few days ago. Do you guys know that you are 30 minutes late? Oh, it's because of this tall guy who didn't let us in. Sung Woo interrupted, and the other guy explained that this was where the mid-earth auction took place, so only participants were allowed in. But to put it simply, it's because the three old men don't know English, so they couldn't explain, right? Well, let me show you then. Ju Hien immediately showed off his English skills like his mother tongue to clear the way for the three disciples. Wouldn't it have been faster to do that from the beginning? Now let's get to the main issue and tell me what you guys have found. Right after that, a pile of documents was placed in front of Ju Hien. This is the document related to the three guys who go by the nickname Zika. After reading for a while, Ju Hien confirmed that this was definitely the fake identity of Director Tae Jun, and if he had come here, he must have a valuable relic he said and continued to look at the list of items to be auctioned. But looking back and forth, there was no rank God's relic here. Could it be that the prophecy was talking about something else? At first, Ju Hien was asking a lot of questions, but the face of Mr. Sung Woo in front of him looked like he had lost his rice book. Don't tell me you're thinking of joining the mid-earth auction. The starting price of the items here is up to tens of billions of won. But after his lecture, the main character also left immediately. Could it be that Ju Hien had learned to listen to others this time? Of course not. Do you know where this is? Gambling is not for those who don't play, it's for those who never win. It's time to go make money and buy luxury goods. The story after that, I guess everyone can guess. With the protagonist's halo, Ju Hien won everywhere he played, making his subordinates sweat and fear. And then what had to come came. A security staff member on the floor asked to search him for suspicion of cheating. We don't usually have players who win so many jackpots. Oh, there's nothing to find. As Ju Hien said, the guy didn't see anything suspicious on him. Except for one thing, according to Ju Hien's explanation, this was just a gold-plated souvenir that he often carried with him. But who knew that it was the golden axe transformed? Changing the shape of the relic was one of the important skills that the user should know. The ability of the golden axe was to detect wealth and value, so Ju Hien knew which machine would give him more jackpots. Not only that, he also knew which casino he should step into. After checking Ju Hien and finding nothing suspicious, the staff even checked the machines. As for Ju Hien, he also quickly went to exchange cash to start his shopping spree. This bag of money is enough for me to enjoy for the rest of my life. Nearby, Sung Woo couldn't help but admire. He wondered why Ju Hien insisted on joining the auction when he could just take this money and be fine. Oh, it's because he had to play with the director Tae Jun. Ju Hien of course didn't say that and quickly told the whole gang to get ready to go. We have to hurry to another casino. Although the casino was a place to make money easily, it was also a battlefield that made people miserable. And where people are miserable, that's heaven for relics. Ju Hien didn't want to see the relics show their delight at all. Just as he was about to step inside, the bag suddenly vibrated violently. It's coming. It's coming soon. The silver axe kept warning its owner that danger was coming. If the golden hoe had the ability to find wealth, the silver axe had the ability to detect the enemy of the owner. At the same time, an argument broke out in front of the four people. The chaos erupted, making the casino a mess. Some people were pickpocket, some were beaten, while the machines were also smashed to pieces. 
while Sung Woo was still wondering what was going on here, a dangerous guy was quietly approaching from behind. Spit out the money, he shouted as he brandished a knife and rushed straight towards Ju Hian. He shouted, and with a simple kick, he made the guy lie on the floor. Looking at his clothes, he could see that he was a dealer of the casino. But attacking the guests like that was like being crazy. Just as he was thinking, a new character appeared. A girl with shiny blonde hair also just entered the casino, making the guys drool. Is that beautiful girl an actress? Contrary to the guys behind him, Ju Hian immediately told them to pack up and run. He didn't expect to meet Huan here. No wonder everything was unlucky like a plague. Irene Huan, the youngest daughter of the family that owns the Huan Bank. She was a rich heiress, but there was one thing wrong with her. As you know, relic gods are the strongest relics among all kinds of relics. Those who own them will be stronger than everyone else, so they are also called gods. Some titles are like the god of fate, the god of conquest, or the god of wealth. They hold great power in the era of relic. However, among them, Irene Hewen was the owner of a relic more terrifying than any other. Her title was the god of failure. Everything near her became unlucky. People would lose all their money and go bankrupt. She even caused global economic chaos. But right now, she is running straight towards our main character. We have to find a way to escape before it's too late. With those thoughts, countless windows pop up immediately. They detect a murderous aura and your relic is suffering serious damage. How can the damage be so severe when we are only close by? Oh God, save me. That must be what Juhian wanted to say when Irene touched his body. As for Irene, she probably saw a handsome guy and wanted to talk to him. A dark energy is enveloping your body. Your luck is being overwhelmed. Everything you do now will lead to failure. Your workability is reduced drastically. With those notifications, Ju Hian had to reject the beautiful girl in front of him. Irene realized she went too far and apologized for her excessive action. Meanwhile, his subordinates didn't understand what was in their boss's mind. How could he push away such a pretty girl? I remember now. I remember who that girl is. The guy in purple shouted from behind. She is Irene Hewan from the Hewan Banking family. On the other hand, Irene also got to the main point. Are you the one who keeps winning the jackpot that everyone is talking about? If possible, can you tell me how you did that? Although he didn't know why a rich person like her was curious about these small coins, safety was the priority. Irene Hewan didn't hesitate to say that she got the wrong person. Now, let's get out of here quickly. Sung Woo also ran over and asked if he didn't know who that girl was. Irene Hewan came all the way here to talk to him, so don't disappoint her. Green Bean, if you don't talk, let me continue the conversation with her. Then, whatever happened had to happen. The three greedy old men had to call 911 to be saved. A few minutes later, later Irene Hewan also explained that they should avoid that woman as much as possible. He said that and then left to go to the auction floor. Although he wanted to earn some more before the auction started, he had to accept the situation. At the entrance of the auction floor, Irene Hewan met an old acquaintance. Hey, you, get out of the way. This is the VIP passage. Shu is the right-hand man of Director Taejun. And of course, his boss, Irene Hewan's sworn enemy, was also here. Now, look up and see how I take all the relics that you intend to buy in the auction. What's going on? The stocks are falling continuously, the phone suddenly broke. The people in the room are in a panic because of the bad luck that keeps coming. Don't tell me it's her. Oh. Who else is here? Irene came all the way here to find our main character. Please listen to me. I'm really desperate right now. I don't know how desperate she is, but Irene Hewan feels uneasy. You better not follow me anymore. All this happened because of her. But right after that, Irene smiled and said yes. It turns out that she also knows that she brings bad luck. It seems that everyone around me has to face misfortune for no reason. I want to be lucky like you because I believe that there is a way to make everyone around me happy. She is the goddess of failure, the destroyer of countless people. But why does she act like this? Is she acting? But probably not. Look at Irene's pitiful face. At the same time, the notification window appeared again. You are being attacked by relic gods. Immunity skill is activated. Juhian remembered that it was the skill he got from swallowing the silver pill. If so, then that's right. Juhian immediately changed 180 degrees and said that he would help Miss Irene in the quest to ward off bad luck. That's what he said, but he was actually planning to use Irene to increase his immunity skill. We can use her to disrupt the others in the auction. It's like killing two birds with one stone. As expected, Young was sweating when he heard that the branch of the company in China suddenly caught fire. The enemy of the enemy is a friend. Miss Irene, your proposal is not bad. But let me tell you, 
It's not easy to be lucky like me. We can talk more about this in the auction. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to start the 74th auction. With the start of the host above, Ju Hian also looked around the auction area. With the appearance of Irene Hewen in just three minutes, he only had a few opponents left. Most people were busy dealing with the unexpected misfortunes. Taeyong didn't leave even though the factory was on fire, which showed that he was very eager for something in this auction. As for Irene, he believed that she was not acting since then. What's more, she didn't know anything about Relic. It meant that the unlucky Relic had attached itself to her. At the same time, Irene also said that she was happy that Ju Hian believed what she said. But don't be happy, sister. Because the mood of the Relic owner was better, the power of the Relic was also increased. The power of the Relic was increasing rapidly. The range of the relic was now one kilometer. Your relic was suffering heavy losses. On the bright side, there is a silver lining. The immunity skill also increased significantly when affected by the relic of God's level. It seemed that there was a small earthquake, but everything was resolved. The host continued to speak above. Meanwhile, the people below kept bidding sky-high prices. Their minds must have been influenced by the power of the relic. After that, Juhian kept saying things that made Irene happier. He wanted her to believe that he could handle the problem. By doing so, when Irene was happy, the power of the relic would increase and make the opponents lose control. They would run out of money quickly before the important items appeared. However, there were still a few items that fell into Young's hands. That was because he was not too affected by the relic. His ability to dominate the relic was too high. But because Ju Hian's knowledge was superior, of course, the things he had were much more useful. Until now. He had the coat of Hamu, the pen of Sek, and the necklace of Marie. However, the relic of God's level mentioned in the prophecy had not appeared yet. As Ju Hian was about to fall, the last item of the auction also appeared above. The surprise event of tonight, the mysterious almond tree that attracted the attention of many people recently. The elixir tree of Qin Shi Huang, a relic of God's level. Not only that, it was also a healing relic. Qin Shi Huang was the first emperor to unify China. When the rumor of the elixir spread, he sent people everywhere to find it. In his previous life, when he used the relic too much, Ju Hian's body was affected by many diseases. He could only rely on the fruit from the elixir tree to survive. So instead of getting money, he could only follow the orders of Taeyong. As expected, this item attracted the attention of a few people. The fruit from the fairy tree has the ability to restore men's vitality. What the hell is that? The auction of the God's level relic turned into a purchase of a sex-enhancing drug. Ignoring that, a fierce duel continued. The current price is $10 million for the fairy tree item. Ju Hian also had no intention of giving up. If it was about money, he was sure he couldn't beat Taeyong, but now it was different. Let's start our deal, Miss Irene. I promise to find a solution for you, but in return you have to help me buy that thing up there. 46 million, 47 million. The current price is $50 million for the fairy tree item. We have reached $50 million. Is there anyone who wants to bid higher? $100 million. Taeyong decided to play big and offered a sky-high price. $150 million. There is always a higher mountain. There is always a richer person. Ju Hian's backup, Irene, quickly offered another sky-high price. $160 million. The director still didn't give up the item. 200 million, Irene's two fingers slightly raised as if this was just a fraction of her account. Before this scene, Taeyong was furious and his subordinate advised him to give up the item. I think we should give up, sir. If I'm not mistaken, that woman is Irene Hyo-Woon, the youngest daughter of the Hyo-Woon tycoon family. Their family's money can be wasted for dozens of generations and still not run out. 220 million, and then Taeyong offered another new price, 300 million. Every time Irene bid, the director got angry. And finally, the fairy drug went to Ju Hian for $500 million. For Irene, money was never a problem. $500 million, if it could solve the problem on her body, it was totally worth it. So now, how are you going to solve it? Are you going to share your luck with me? Irene wondered. Well, actually, there is no solution. The problem of hers cannot be solved even if she holds a lucky charm. The only way is to separate that thing from her body. Simply put, she should give me the strange object that she owns. This time, his goal was to kill two birds with one stone. He could help Irene escape from bad luck and own the unlucky relic. Hearing the other party say that, Irene also remembered something. I don't seem to have any strange objects that I always carry with me. Then, what about tattoos? Do you have any tattoos on your body? Relic is divided into two types, relic consumption and relic possession. 
tattoos will appear on the owner of the relic possession. It creates a connection between the owner and the relic through the tattoo, contrary to the relic consumption that can be used based on the limit of times from anyone. Then, the relic possession has no limit, but only the owner can control it. All the powerful relics of God's level are relic possession. At the same time, Irene also showed Juhian a picture, just looking at it made him surprised, not because of her smooth body, but because of the tattoo. Irene's relic is a parasitic type, this type of relic is quite rare because they are in the body of the user, and there is one thing for sure that he cannot separate that terrible power from Irene's body right now. I thought this was easy, but it seems I was wrong, Juhian said as he gave his phone number. When we have more time, I will try to think of another way to help you. Of course, his purpose was still to turn a rich person like her into an ally. Then Juhian also called his three friends to bring money, but something was strange. Why don't these bastards answer the phone? Oh, they are busy carrying the backpack of money to escape. We are rich as hell, boss. This is enough for us to enjoy until the end of our lives. But before we could celebrate for long, a familiar sound came again. How dare you take my money and run away? How do you guys know how powerful the gold axe's money finding power is? As he spoke, Juhian took out a stone that looked like a relic. This was one of the relics he had collected at the auction. A perfect relic for counterattack. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. We will repay their betrayal with another betrayal. After Juhian recited the spell, a ring of gold appeared on the hands of the three others, the stone statue of Hammurabi's code. It had the ability to counterattack anything that the enemy used to attack. Right after that, the rings on the hands of Sung Wu's three men disappeared in their surprised eyes. Understanding Ju Hian's thoughts, he also explained that he only used the three of them to test the power. To put it simply, you guys just signed a slave contract with me. If you mess around, you're dead meat. One of the men in the group felt like Ju Hian was telling the truth, as the stone tablet appeared and disappeared in an instant. In front of him, Ju Hian continued to say that the world's era would soon be turned upside down. Although it was a slave contract, if you guys do well, I'll give you a try. You might even earn more money than what you guys just tried to steal from me. That sounds good, but what do we have to do? Sung Wu also asked on behalf of the group. The next day at a hotel in Las Vegas, Ju Hian's three underlings were given a lofty task early in the morning. See that tree over there, you guys have to plant it for me. That tree is worth $500 million, so take good care of it. But contrary to expectations, the three men were quite liked by the fairy tree. Knowing that Ju Hian had a life and death battle to make a deal with it yesterday, it blamed the owner for being domineering and preferred those who were more harmonious. It seemed that the three men were quite suitable for the job of babysitting the fairy tree. As he was smiling happily in his stomach, a strange number called him. Are you CO Ju Hian? I'm the executive director of TKBM. I want to get straight to the point. I heard that you were the one who bought back the fairy herb from Irene Hewen. Although Ju Hian was a bit surprised by how he caught the news, he quickly replied. Basically, I have nothing to say if you want to ask about the herb. I'm hanging up. That's when we saw the angry face of the director. Damn, that kid didn't even bother to talk and hung up. As for the assistant CEO, he also bowed his head and apologized for blocking the show himself. If successful, the director would recognize his ability. He then said that he would take full responsibility for getting back the fairy herb. After all, that guy was just an ordinary person, so this was easy as pie. So please let me use a relic from the company's warehouse. On Ju Hian's side, the slave Sung Wu heard that his boss had just hung up on the director of TKPM. Do you know how many chances you have to talk to him? But it seems like you forgot who's the boss here, right? Watch out, if you mess around, I'll give you a slap, okay? Ju Hian was stubborn, but he knew that sooner or later Tae Jun would try to steal the fairy herb. So to ensure safety, he had to act first. Hours later, Ju Hian deliberately went to secluded places to lure the follower out. Did you Han come alone? You could also feel that Han had a hidden energy of relic on him. If so, then it's convenient for me to act, right? Then after a while, the CU finally saw Ju Hian's presence. Excuse me, are you Ju Hian? As expected, he took the bait. As for you, after repeatedly greeting him, he was annoyed by the lack of response. Hey, are you deaf? If someone talks to you, you should at least answer back. Be polite. If you want to talk business with me, don't make that face. You bastard, how dare you hit me? You got up after falling. Ju Hian went straight to the main issue. You have something important to tell me, right? Well, I'll let this go for the sake of the director's benefit. We met last night at Midas, remember? 
and yet you kept denying and saying that you didn't remember anything, making you angry. This was Han's weakness. You was easily swayed by the words of others. Although he acted tough on the outside, he always had a big inferiority complex inside. He used to be an heir of a large company, but he lost his inheritance rights for doing some stupid things. Thanks to Taejun, he had some success today. He always tried to get the old man's recognition, but he also got angry and lost control if they touched his weak points. Thinking about it, Juhin said that he couldn't easily hand over the fairy tree because it was very important. However, if you are polite, I can reconsider. So, even though he was bitter, you had no choice but to bow his head and apologize. Thank him for the cooperation and please hand over the tree because it was very important to them. Well, you're screwed, you trusted people too much. Juhin burst into laughter because he couldn't believe that the idiot you believed his words. Damn, you're brave. As he spoke, he opened a bottle of some kind of solution. I knew I should have acted from the start. I'll turn you into a slave and kill you. But after swiping a line across the opponent's eyes, you wondered why the drug didn't work. That's because you've lost control. Now it's mine. The relic bottle quickly landed on Juhian's hand. Then layers of powder were sprinkled on Yu's body, before his screams of agony. This was a rank a relic named Zombie Powder of the Dark Witch. In Africa, the Dark Witches had the ability to control others and turn them into their zombies. If you touch or inhale it, you will lose consciousness temporarily and become a brainless zombie. With this, Taeyong's plan will be delayed and that is the time for me to pack up. A few hours later, at the headquarters of TKBM, nothing could be more bitter than the fact that the person who was sent to do the mission became such an idiot. He even made the news with his naked body walking around the city of Las Vegas. But at that time, some employees reported that team leader Yu, when found, did not carry any relic at all. It was likely that it had been confiscated by the police. We also investigated the places where team leader Yu went through but found no trace. But Taeyong thought differently. There was no need to investigate anymore. Surely the bastard who made you go crazy was the one who stole the relic. He must have a large conglomerate backing him up or he was very good at using relic. At Macaron International Airport, Juhian's group was preparing to return to Korea. Basically, this trip was not bad at all. The coat of Hammurabi, the pen of Sheik, the necklace of Marie, and finally the fairy herb of Qin Shi Huang. Moreover, they also mixed the zombie set with the fox tail and the home rose glasses from Yu's place. However, nothing was easy and smooth like that. Hello, Mr. Juhian, I am Lee Jin Ae a senior lawyer of TKBM. We know that you own the relic belonging to team leader you, so it is useless even if you deny it. The director of our company has thought a lot about your skills and wants me to come here to make a job offer. We will pay you $100 million. Not only that, but you will also receive an annual salary. We will also not interfere with your daily life and just need you to link with TKBM. But the response was still that provocative face. As you can see, these things have no value to me. I also know what the old man is thinking. And then he got a long and hard lesson from the lawyer Gina E. Have you thought about the scenario if the director takes action against you? As if it was an accident in the middle of the street or a missing person without a trace, now you finally show your fox face, ha? Huh? But I also advise you one thing. If you want to fight with someone, you better choose your opponent wisely, because it's very likely that the one who disappears will be you. Although she knew the zombie set was very dangerous, Gina E was very stubborn. She believed that Ju Hien wouldn't dare to use it in such a crowded place, because otherwise the relic would be discovered by everyone. Don't challenge anyone, challenge the main character, your stupid, sister. Then only heard the screams of despair echoing. Get it off me quickly. Are you crazy or what? How dare you use relic here? But not only not afraid, Ju Hien also called everyone to quickly record the upcoming fun scene. After recording, remember to upload it online, okay? Just saying that but you also know that the person in front of you will be fine when touching the zombie set. Her ability to control relic is not that bad. With that thought, Jin Ae in front of him started to use her relic. Taste my water cannon. But Ju Hien didn't even get wet, then Hammurabi's code counterattacked her. Now kill the one who tried to harm the owner of the silver axe. Well, just saying that, but this relic can't kill anyone, everyone. The announcement just heard a loud noise in the cafe. It could be a terrorist attack. The news also reported that a naked woman was running around in the cafe. The existence of souls and objects is real. Back to Ju Hien, he also got the Paris drawing ink relic from the lawyer Jean Ae. This is a rank B relic. At the same time, a voice suddenly rose up. Human, follow my voice, is that you, you rotten crow? 
Ju Hian started punching the air like a madman in front of his three juniors. You're pretty good, huh? The director also came here after hearing that something happened at this cafe. Meanwhile, Ju Hian's juniors also lost control of their bodies at the same time. Was it because of the power of the old man opposite? Ju Hian quickly put a knife to his throat. You better not cause trouble. Don't control others, especially when they are my subordinates. Then, with that threat, the juniors also escaped from the control. So that was why you and Jin Ae became like that. Your skills are better than I thought. Then he continued to talk about a new prophecy recently. That one day the whole world will know about the existence of Relic. As you can see, I don't want that to happen. I will kill anyone who knows about Relic to delay that prophecy as long as possible. As soon as he finished, he activated some power and attacked Ju Hian. But then, in his eyes, there was only surprise because he was still calm. Why don't you disappear? My relic will send you to another dimension far away from this world. Oh, so that's what you're talking about. In Ju Hian's hand was a piece of paper that he had mixed from Young's body when they collided. How dare you steal my relic, you're no different from a thief. The current pickpocketing skill has been upgraded to rank D. As for the ticket, after using the reconnaissance skill, he saw that it was called the Invitation of the Lonely God, a relic of God's level. Although he really wanted to kick the old man in front of him out of sight, he couldn't use it yet. In response to Taeyong, who was preparing to play his second trump card, he was someone who always carried a lot of relics with him. One of them was the Conqueror, a relic that could control the brains of others and make them obey completely. It was like Irene Hune's, which was also a parasitic relic. If they could attack him to test it, it would be easy but he also had a relic armor on him. Just as Taeyong was about to eliminate the threat, a familiar voice spoke up again. Foolish humans, stop your actions. This is not a place where you should stay. It warned that a large amount of Egyptian aura was clinging to their bodies. A large number of powerful relics that caused the apocalypse had begun to appear. This was the beginning of the chaotic era event. The airport was destroyed by an Egyptian structure that emerged from the ground, which was probably the tomb of Anubis. This was the event that started the chain of great dungeons all over the world. At this time, Ju Hian also turned to explain to his subordinates that they were trapped in the center of a dungeon. What they had to do was find the owner of it and overcome the challenge. But it seemed that he had not allowed it yet. Young activated his power of domination again and ordered them all to kneel down. However, he was also puzzled because he could not fully control the people in front of him. They were only controlled physically, but they did not lose their reason. He said that these mortals could resist him. Above them, a white snake bared its teeth and waved its claws, as if ready to devour the people below alive. But thanks to that, Ju Hian and the others also escaped from Young's control. As he knew, it was Seth. In Egyptian mythology, Seth was one of the nine main gods. He was the god of the desert, darkness, chaos, and evil. Therefore, Seth's relic would be extremely cruel and demonic. At the same time, another black dog also appeared. He seemed to be more calm than the other one. He is Anubis and the necklace he is wearing is probably Osiris. Osiris is also one of the nine gods. He represents reproduction and the afterlife. Meanwhile, Anubis is the god of death and tombs. He is the one who leads the dead to the other world. With their appearance, it means that three relic gods are appearing in the same place. If so, then we will challenge them first. The best way to deal with these low-class humans is to overwhelm them. Seth's relic was starting the trial process. Or more precisely, an attack, and in an instant, the aura was covering everything. The people below were constantly having symptoms of overload. Ju Hian's subordinates, each one of them, had blood in their mouths and fell to the ground because of the pressure from the aura. Fortunately, Ju Hian had immunity skills in his body, otherwise the outcome would not be different from them. Nearby, Director Young was also panicked and exclaimed, not understanding what the hell was going on why his body did not obey his control. Quickly go find a hiding place. Seeing the danger of this place, Ju Hian also turned to Sung Wu and instructed, because the relics above did not pay much attention to the people, they should quickly leave the area. Although he did not know whether to be happy or sad about the words of his boss, the three younger brothers also listened. They carried and lifted each other and quickly left. As for the director, seeing Ju Hian still calm, he wondered. Why you are not affected at all? Well, you can see that as the difference in skills. Contrary to the screaming below, Zed and Anubis above were angry and wondered why the human did not get hurt. Could it be that we are too lenient? It turns out that you are just like that. As he spoke, Juhian summoned the stone statue relic of Hammurabi's code. What do you intend to do with it? The level of that relic is far from reaching our level. 
Seeing Juhian summon a greater relic, Anubis and Zed laughed loudly, we will make you pay. As soon as he finished speaking, Zed attacked continuously below with countless thunderbolts. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, we will answer your betrayal with another betrayal. For some reason, all of Zed's power was easily blocked by Juhian. Of course, the two gods above did not understand what was going on. Osiris in the form of a necklace saw the situation was not good and knew what he had to do. We need something else, so let me use my power. Before he finished speaking, Zed shouted and refused. If we use our true power, our lifespan will be reduced. So a fiery argument broke out. Or more precisely, Zed and Osiris were about to fight each other. Below, Juhian was also curious because when the two appeared, they did not fight because of Zed and Osiris, so the fight between them was inevitable. In Egyptian mythology, Zed caused heavenly disasters, or competed with his brother Osiris and killed him. According to history, the relationship between the two relics would also be like that. He also knew that this was his chance. We need to attack when they are distracted. But before he could act, Anubis above noticed the human below had some scheme. You seem to be the only one awake here, huh? Juhian also realized the problem. So I will take you down first. Then let's see if you can survive. A ring of light quickly enveloped Juhian's body and dragged him somewhere. A person like you will never pass my test. According to Anubis, he was being taken to his test. A scale. Very soon after, Juhian was placed on a scale, and in front of him was nothing else but the body of Anubis. He introduced it as the scale of judgment. Right now, I will judge the lowly human being. Juhian guessed that maybe because his aura could not affect him, Anubis came up with this method, but that was also a good thing. This was an opportunity to get the relic of Anubis. In his previous life, Juhian had met someone who used the relic of Anubis. That person said that the relic of Anubis would ask a number of questions and the human had to answer no. He also said, I don't remember the exact answer, but it's pretty easy. With that thought, the jury of the trial was fully present. Now I will start asking the person 42 questions. If the person can answer no to all the questions, the person will pass the test. However, if the person lies, the monster hidden in the darkness will take the heart and swallow the person. And this is the first question. Have you ever stolen anything? Damn, are you stupid from the first question? Contrary to Juhian's constipated face, Anubis above smiled smugly. I knew it. Then I'll give you a few more questions. Have you ever lied? Have you ever hit anyone? Have you ever caused someone else to lose their property? A series of questions were asked and of course all of them were things Juhian did like daily meals. None of them are easy questions. They are only easy because children have not lived long enough to make those mistakes. At the same time, Anubis also continued to act. He reached out and grabbed Juhian and said that he probably could not answer any of those questions. It is true that humans are full of filthy sins. The human heart is heavier than iron, so stay in hell where you belong. With that said, a monster appeared and prepared to swallow Juhian's body. Is this really the end? After an unknown amount of time, Juhian was thrown into a barren land full of corpses. And as soon as he landed, he did not have time to think and a brawl continued. The demons here saw a new prey. Damn you guys, if you are tasty, come on. Juhian also quickly grabbed a bone next to him as a weapon to defend himself. If you are good, come at me. A fight like that started and what had to come came. Juhian quickly lost ground as the demons were as numerous as straw and constantly resurrected. Do I have to die again? It seems like the person needs help, human, you are really stupid. A stream of unexpected power poured out from Juhian's body and repelled the bone demons around, and the one who did that was none other than the crow relic, he shouted to run but did not help, he liked to stay and report. It has been a long time since I did that to myself, I said and slowly approached the place where my brother was standing. No matter what timeline it is, I am always the only one. Nothing changes in this space and I will help you get out of here. It seems more fun if you use the Egyptian power to defeat the ancient Egyptian gods. While Juhian still did not understand what he was saying, a mysterious power destroyed all the bone demons in space. Outside, Seth and Osiris were still watching Anubis's space. Although it took some time, it seemed that the judgment was over. But then they quickly realized that something was wrong, the Seth judgment space created by Anubis was being torn apart, do you believe that a normal person can do that? Without letting them guess anymore, the space quickly shattered into thousands of pieces before the horrified eyes of everyone, because this power is not of the god, the great sun god. I knew it was that bastard, the damn crow, Anubis what is going on, get up, Seth was panicked with everything that was happening. 
It was clear that the crow helped the human, but he was clearly imprisoned. Why did he appear here? You bastard. I still remember you siding with the humans to destroy and absorb energy from our brothers. Then Seth continued to look this way and said, I will wipe out everything that stands in my way. As soon as he finished, Seth used his real power to collapse the tomb. In this space and timeline, the dead are rising all over the world. On the other side, the crow relic said that he could not help Juhian anymore, but the reply was his confident face that surprised him. Do you have a way? You should know that everyone has run away and there is no way to escape this tomb. Do you think I'm stupid? Juhian replied, I will use my relic to fight, and aren't the real shapes of the relic's objects, they must be around here. And then right after that, Juhian rushed to fight with the zombies of the tomb, a one-sided battle was taking place. Although it seemed that Juhian had the upper hand, he should know that the zombies were endless. And above them, three zombie figures with relics in their chests were Anubis, Seth, and Osiris. Seth and Osiris, in their relic forms, told Anubis to quickly recover after he was injured by the crow's attack. Because soon we will deal with the human on behalf of the God of Judgment, all three of them transformed into giant mummies and stood in front of Juhian. They started to attack him with fists instead of power as before, since in this space they were in their true forms of relics. But for a super dirty buff like Juhian, any form of them was not a problem. The Egyptian funeral knife must react to another Egyptian relic, right? Hurry up and take me to Anubis. While Juhian was quietly approaching, the three relics above were still talking incessantly. Seth and Osiris were trying to explain everything that Anubis had been beaten by the destructive crow before. They didn't know how he came back, but with his power, the three of them couldn't easily defeat the human who was backed up by him. Well, that's right, and while they were busy talking, one of the three figures was secretly hit by Juhian, he was Seth, and the second one also quickly fell down. The embodiment of Osiris, the last one, was the one that Juhian was looking for, the embodiment of Anubis, the holy cross of faith. What is your purpose in doing this? Anubis didn't say much and asked Juhian directly about his actions before, simply saying that you should open the challenge again. Moreover, you also have to change your list of questions if you don't want to be chopped into pieces, this guy has the crow to carry him so he's arrogant, guys. Relic Anubis had no choice but to reopen the challenge, the big scale and the jury appeared again just like before. Well, to be exact, not everyone was the same as before. Look at Anubis's behavior, he was pushed by Juhian and grabbed his neck to show off his strength. You have to ask the questions that I set, and these new questions are of course more beneficial for you. The first question, have you ever stolen from anyone? Of course I have. By changing the answer to yes for all questions, it will be beneficial, while Relic Anubis was crying because the challenge was about to end. You have completed the task that the giant tomb gave you, one of the three relics has completely surrendered to you. Relic Anubis was conquered, countless notification windows appeared right after the moment the challenge ended. After getting the new item, what should I do? Juhian used Anubis's power to clean up the tomb. A big earthquake followed by the collapse of all the structures inside. Meanwhile, the director was terrified because this meant that the kid had taken the relic. He knew that Juhian was a scary guy, and he had to kill him somehow if he really could not pull him to his side. With that thought, he approached to interrogate Juhian. I'm really sorry for not recognizing your ability before. I want to make an offer. Do you want to work with me? You turned your face too fast, old man. I thought you wanted to kill me, Juhian asked back. Well, that was when we didn't understand each other. Relic will change this world. And in the world layer, people like us and you are the ones with the greatest potential. As the chairman and director of TKPM Group, I promise to support you to the fullest to bring you to the big C. I want to hone that skill into a superstar, so work for me. Of course, there is a catch, Juhian pointed his sword at him and wondered, why you dared to say work for me right after you said work together, the ambition of this bastard is too obvious, do you invest in me and then make me vomit all the deserved results and then, kick my ass like a piece of trash whenever you want, facing those words, Juhian was not scared at all, you are more sensitive than I thought, anyway, I have more valuable things now, so working for me is right, think carefully. You have gone through countless dangers to collect relic, you will find it difficult to handle this alone. Before he finished his words, a sword cut across his neck. Is a villain going to die easily like that? Of course not, that was his cunning smile, blood splattered everywhere and began to return to his body. With automatic healing, this was the power of his relic. A relic of the gods level named the body of Asin. Asin was a warrior who appeared in Greek mythology. 
His mother was the sea goddess Amphitrite while his father was a mortal named Peleus. Geo Tit wanted his son to be immortal like himself so he dipped Asin's body into the water of the Stid River by holding his heel. From then on, Asin had a strong and immortal body but his heel was his weakness. According to the myth, Asin died because he was shot in the heel by an arrow. Because Taeyong owned that relic, he must have a weakness too. It's easy to say but the problem is that I don't know where that weakness is. If Taeyong continued to mock, I understand your ability but right now you can't beat me. So become an ally because I really don't want to fight. Isn't that too obvious for someone like you to understand? Focus all your power, Niramesa. The only answer to his invitation was the sword in his hand. Have you ever heard of the term bin bien, old man? That's what I'm going to do. Miramesa is a perfect weapon to create bin bien. The enemy's higher than it will become stronger. Now let's see if you shut up when I stab you with all this power, huh? As soon as the sound ended, Taeyong's body was marked with another scar. That's how he slashed him with the maximum domination over Miramesa. Then the power of the relic will far exceed its actual value but in return it will be destroyed. Anyway, to kill an enemy who is not on the same level, the price is not too expensive. Maybe because he felt threatened, my relic of domination automatically activated. If you step into the affected area, you will have to take damage from it. By using the Hammurabi code, you can reflect more damage on him. Of course, the Hammurabi relic was also affected by this. A few seconds later, after Ju Hian's counterattack, Old Taeyong fainted while the Asin relic and the ruler were severely damaged. On the other hand, his Miramesa relic was broken and the Hammurabi relic was also not lightly affected. At that moment, Ju Hian's subordinates also came back after discovering that the tomb had disappeared. They wondered why there was a dead body here. Ju Hian explained that he was only injured, although he wished that was the truth. Currently, there was no way to kill him completely because he still had the armor relic, but he would have to stay in the hospital for a while. Outside, as expected, most of the buildings were destroyed. The media also reported on a series of tombs that suddenly appeared. Many people witnessed the monsters flying around the city, the zombies crawling out of the ground and flying everywhere. Among them, some people used superpowers with strange abilities. On the other side, Sung Woo and Ju Hian were watching the news and guessed that the world now knew about Relic. Mr. Sung Woo did not know what Relic Boss meant, so Ju Hian explained that it was the thing above the forest, and this world would change. The ones who had the best relic in their hands would be the ones who had the power. And inside, it seemed that a few of the relic were complaining about their broken bodies. Then Ju Hian picked up the phone and called a very useful friend of his. Dear Irene, I know this is not the time to bother you, but I have found a way to break the curse. On the other end of the line, Irene was overjoyed as the sun rose in her hand. But she did not know that he was tricking her, but it was not really a trick. He just needed a few more factors to find a solution for the curse. With that thought, Ju Hian wanted Irene to help him find someone, Jaha. He was an expert in restoring relic. All relics would usually be destroyed due to durability or overuse. There was no way to restore the relic that were destroyed. However, there were some relic that had the ability to restore other relic, and the people who owned them were called restoration experts. Jaha was one of the best at that. He smashed the black market and was called the king of scams. He caught the eye of director Ju Hian and was in the same excavation team. At that time, the problem of relic being damaged was no longer a big deal. Back to the present, the two also arrived at the meeting point with Miss Irene. Maybe people will wonder why Ju Hian didn't look for a relic of recovery for himself. But you have to know that most of those relics are classified as art, so using them is very difficult. It would be better to become a slave trader and force them to work for you. Right now, the sound of Irene came down from above, that's what rich people are like. Just going to meet but using a private helicopter. Chu Hien was also a bit overwhelmed by her extravagance, but quickly got to the main issue. He explained that the person he was looking for was a Korean youth named Jaha. But after hearing the name, Irene said that she had never heard of it before. She didn't know because he must have used a fake ID. Chu Hien explained and asked Irene if she knew anyone who collected artworks. Oh. If that's the case, then my brother has it. He loves art and also meets many people who share his interest. Along with her words, Ju Hien also showed a picture. The person we are looking for looks like this. What was surprising was Irene's face when she saw him. Are you sure you're looking for him? A month ago, he scammed my brother. I met him when I visited my parents' house. I remember his face very well because he was very kind, but I didn't expect that he would scam my brother. Ju Hien was not surprised by that because his nickname was the King of Scams. 
This was the time when Jaha was practicing his profession. But the next thing Irene said was shocking. She thought that maybe he could not be found because there was news that he had died. He was caught when he tried to trick a friend of my brother. They did not know if it was because of the brake failure or not, but they went so fast that they flew straight down the cliff after crashing the guardrail. Juhin was also skeptical when he heard that. This was a bit illogical. He was only 25 years old now and he would not meet me for the first time until 5 years later, so it did not make sense. But on the other hand, could it be that the future has changed? Thinking back, everything was happening differently from the world before he died. The relic that created the huge tomb had appeared in India, but now it belonged to Egypt. He thought and told her to try to find Jaha again before Irene's surprised eyes. Anyway, we had to hope for a scoundrel who could not die easily like that. At some hospital, the news was reporting a strange phenomenon that had occurred all over the world. Large architectural structures shaped like huge tombs were constantly appearing. The Korean government also decided to study relic. Meanwhile, Taeyong was bandaged on one side with everything. He had tried to keep the existence of relic secret, but because of that bastard, everything turned out like this. And more, why did his body not recover? At that moment, a man named Edward came in from outside. After telling his subordinates to go out, he quickly got to the point. He thought that Young had acted too excessively. Summoning a tomb of that size was really dangerous. He did not know if it was an accident or not, but it only appeared after he activated the relic. He also added that the guests were very angry about this because after all, their source of information was me. Not only a weapons dealer, but Edward was also known as an information seller. At that time, he wondered why the wound on Young's body did not heal. I know you have an immoral relic, but why did everything turn out like this? He also hastily explained that his relic seemed to be damaged by that bastard Juhin. Hearing that, Edward also said he would help restore that relic. I will contact the relic restorer, so you just need to keep collecting relics for my broker. Find out what kind of person Seo Juhin is. Meanwhile, at another place, Juhin also received a call from Edward. Oh, why did you answer my phone so quickly? You picked up right away. Does that mean you're out of money? This old Edward grasped the situation quite fast. And Juhian also asked about the main thing. Did you call me to give me a job? But as soon as I heard about restoring Relic, I wanted to hang up right away. Those things related to Relic are so tiring. But when he heard the name of the director of TKBM Group, he changed 180 degrees. If he's as rich as him, I guess I don't have to worry about the payment. Thank you, old man. I'll do 100%. The next day. Juhin's group arrived at the address that Irene gave. He guessed that a scammer like him couldn't die in a car accident like that. He quickly asked the person in front of him about Juhin. I'm sorry, but our executive director is not in the office. Damn, are you saying he faked his death? Mr. Sung Woo slammed his hand on the table and asked again as soon as he heard that. Have you forgotten who's the boss here, you idiot? We have to be flexible to lure Juhin out, so please use your brain a little. Seeming to understand the scheme of these people, the assistant also said that her director had died in an accident. Oh, that's too bad. Juhian quickly threw a bag of stuff on the table and pretended to be sad when he heard that Juhian had died. What should I do with these things? Inside, they are all relics. There are more than 10 relics and they are all high-grade relics. You're in trouble now, kid. Just looking at the expression on her face, I can tell she's drooling over them. She realized this and Juhian asked her another question. Please help us. They are all very valuable but they are all broken. It doesn't have to be Director Juhin, but I need at least one person to restore them. You can work with Director Juhin, so you can fix them, right? That was the bait. She told everyone to wait while she would quickly go to the recovery room. She was Minzi, the assistant of Juhin. Her greed was no different from her boss. Of course, she would not miss such a good opportunity to steal relics from others. On the other side, Juhian also received a call about someone bringing a bunch of relics to the company. He brought more than 10 relics and it seemed that there were relics with God's level. I can see that these guys look stupid. Just trick them and it's done. The answer after that was obvious. As soon as he heard about making money, he agreed without thinking. He just needed to make fake goods and exchange them with the real ones. Back at the owner's place after the phone call, Minzi also came and said that she would restore the relics right away. Can I take them to the recovery room for convenience? We need machines to check the damage level of them. Sung Woo was terrified when he saw the boss nod without thinking. He whispered, what if she ran away with the relics? You are young and naive. To catch a good fish, you need a good smell. Have you ever heard that before? 
A few minutes later, inside the recovery room of the company, two people, a director and an employee, looked at the pile of relics with their eyes wide open and their mouths open. They could tell by their butts that this place was full of high-level relics. Then Zhu Hien told Menzi to go outside and greet the fools while he would check and make copies. For him, making fake relics was as easy as eating cake. Relic of forgery was a rank B relic with a rare attribute. A relic specialized in creating copies for Zhu Hien's scamming. Just by touching the relic that needs to be faked, the user can create a copy that is identical to the original relic. The copy even mimics some of the abilities of the relic that it copies. The fake relic also emits a halo that is no different from the real relic. So ordinary people can hardly tell that it is a fake. Outside, Sung Woo looked at the amount of money needed to restore the relic and sweated profusely. It cost 10 million won for each wound that the relic had to endure. It was no different from daylight robbery, right then Minzi also called two people to discuss. I'm very sorry, but because your relic is so badly damaged, the restoration will be very difficult. These relics are almost completely destroyed. Before she could finish her sentence, she received a thunderbolt from Ju Hien. Who are you trying to fool? Behind Sung Woo also added more questions about what the boss was doing. Damn it, this kid turned my stuff into fake stuff. Facing four thugs, Minzi now knew what fear was. With her super fast jumping brain, she quickly pointed inside. Sir, the real stuff is in there, I'm not the one who makes fake stuff, so please spare me. And Jaha also clearly heard everything that his assistant said. How did that bastard know? The question just flashed in his head, he ate a shot and fell back. Ah, it's you, you dog, as soon as he said Ju Hien used the divine rope to blind him. Now tell me where my stuff is, it's in the safe, let me go, I'll get it back for you. Along with Jaha's screams, Ju Hien quickly approached the safe with another relic of his. How the hell did you know the password of my safe, why did you come here? Ju Hien quickly took back his stuff and wondered why Jaha acted like that. According to his memory, he was not that kind of person. Jaha was a rising artist and also a student at a famous art university in the US. But then he lost his artistic style that he developed, because he spent too much time and effort to draw. The mastermind behind it all was none other than his teacher. Only Richard, he received a lot of attention with the painting style that he stole and won the prize. There was a copyright lawsuit but it was quickly invalidated. Jaha was buried deep in despair. That was also the time when his path changed, he deceived others with his extraordinary talents. But thanks to that, the relic of deception also approached him. That was the summary of Jaha's life. And the urgent matter now was how to persuade this guy, which was a headache. But forget it, why bother pursuing this idiot? Ju Hien took out a relic and asked Jaha if he knew what relic it was. It was called Shakespeare's pen. When writing on paper, some things will become true. Right now, what I'm writing is a memorial for Jaha, 26 years old, who died because of being strangled by a rope. Along with the massacre inside, the three subordinates outside also felt sorry. Imagine becoming a lunatic like Jaha, it would be miserable. As expected, Jaha immediately begged and agreed to do whatever the boss asked. Of course, there was no repair fee, but instead he had to sign a contract with me and I would spare his life. The contract owner Seo Juhian signed, the slave Ju Jaha signed. Jaha could only cry now and didn't know what to do. He had really become a poor slave mosquito. According to the contract, Jaha could not accept any requests from anyone other than Seo Juhian. Moreover, if he broke the contract, he would be punished according to the law of Hammurabi. About this matter, it was best to ask the three genie god Sung Wu. But according to the villain Ju Hien, this contract should be called an exclusive contract. The deposit was 6 million in advance and he would get a bonus for each restoration. But he said nonsense and called it a slave contract, that was not allowed. Well, that was through his mouth only, he always had an advantage. I decided to betray him. Jaha had not seen the coffin yet. Sung Wu immediately volunteered to lead some guys to find that idiot again. But don't be too hard on him. At the hospital, old Young was receiving a call from Jaha. It seemed that he was very eager to restore the relic for the director. Ha ha, that was fine, let's talk about the terms of the deal. But before he could say anything more about the deal, the other end of the line sounded a scream. It was obvious that Jaha was being tortured horribly. Hello, are you Chairman Young? Does our Young also need to restore the relic? But unfortunately I have to announce this. From now on Jaha is my exclusive relic restorer. How annoying is that? It was always that bastard. Before Jaha's clear eyes, Juhian also explained simply for him to understand, that working for the director of TKPM was a stupid thing. 
he should stop dreaming of things far away because he and that organization were a pile of rottenness. I was the rope that he should hold on to. Of course, Jaya didn't believe those words for a long time. A guy who forced me to sign a slave contract and then badmouthed others behind their backs. I was not that stupid. And then Juhian also didn't hesitate to sit down and chat for a bit. Let's introduce ourselves. I am Seo Juhian from Seoul, Korea. Do you want to be the leader of the excavation team? I will let you do the restoration task. I will do some things if you don't want to. As he spoke, Juhian picked up a notebook, in which it said that Jaha was a study abroad student with a very passionate passion for art. But not long after that, this artist cheated someone in Los Angeles. He even copied the artwork of another artist. His painting was said by others to have the same style as the famous artist Gene Richard. As soon as he said that, Jaya couldn't stand it anymore and punched Juhian. He explained that it was the bastard Richard who stole his work, but painting was not easy to copy. Juhian also pretended to be curious and asked again. Jaya continued to explain that although he didn't know the reason, but that bastard still knew what he was going to do, it was like walking in his shoes. Actually, there were some relics that had that ability. As I knew, Gene Richard was a relic user. Maybe that relic allowed him to transform into the character he wanted. Even the knowledge and skills were copied perfectly. What if I help you regain the reputation and style that you were stolen by Gene Richard? Instead of becoming my exclusive restorer? That's right. To have a good deal, you have to understand what the other party wants most. Then they won't be able to refuse such an offer. I thought it was a divine calculation, but it turned out to be a guess, my friends. Right after that Jaha said he needed time to think before deciding. Well, whatever, Juhian threw something in Jaha's face and said he would respect his decision. When you go to negotiate with Taeyong, remember to bring this. This is the relic that protects the body, so try to come back in good condition. The next day Jaha came to negotiate as agreed with director Taeyong. But before getting to the main issue Juhian asked about Gene Richard, did the director know him? Of course I know him, isn't he a world famous painter? But why did you suddenly ask about that? He stole my work. He used Relic to steal my work, so he got that reputation. I want you to catch him and make him admit his mistake, if possible, I will definitely sign an exclusive contract with you. But after Jaha finished, he got a laugh from the old man, quite interesting, but what to do when you chose the wrong person? Hello Richard, I heard some interesting stories. Do you know anyone named Jaha? Taeyong called Richard and chatted. Now you know that you messed up. The two of them are not just acquaintances, but they are also key members of Pandora, a relic hunting group that is about to appear. Oh Jaha, you don't want to live like a mouse, but you want to die. Even though it was bitter, Jaha had no choice but to find an excuse to escape before it was too late. Oh, there's a thing, I haven't sent you home yet. Right after the boss's words, a soldier rushed to strangle Jaha. Damn it, which gang are you, you thugs? Then he also remembered the relic that Juhian gave him for self-defense. Die, you bastards. He shouted and brought the relic in front of him to attack. But there was something strange. Damn it, you tricked me, why didn't it work? Oh, it's all in the plan, you know. If you appear at the time when others are most desperate, then that's when they know who they need. Are you moved to tears? He knocked down Young's subordinates with a punch, and the old man was furious with the bastard in front of him. And Juhian also quickly replied that he just wanted to take his friend away. And besides, if you want to fight, you have no chance with your broken relics. He continued to tell his subordinates to get up and catch him. Oh my, then there's no other way. Juhian took out a paper and pen to prepare to write a wish. The bodyguards, if they hit Jaha and Juhian, would have to endure the ultimate pain before dying. The time is right now. A few hours later at Juhian's boss's house. The fourth slave was collected. Jaha wondered what he had to do now. Well, of course, you have to fix the pile of broken relics. Because now you will be the person in charge of restoration for our excavation team. Now hurry up and call me boss. As soon as he got the person, the main character showed his true face. And after the quarrels, the result was quite clear. Don't talk nonsense anymore and get to work quickly before I get angry. You have to fix all these relics in three days. Don't joke like that, brother, that's impossible. How can I fix this much in three days? You have to give me at least one month. Your relics are all high level and they are about to break. But Juhian doesn't care about that. In his eyes, Jaha is nothing but a greedy and lazy guy. It takes a whole month to do this pile of work. Then you try to prove that you can restore it quickly. Jaha also challenged Juhian to see how skilled he was and only knew how to urge others. This will help you a lot in restoring relics. 
What Jeha just took out was a Joshin rank B painting pen. As long as you can do it, I will do as you say. And then Father Jeha also wanted to bet that if the boss failed, then his job was to restore one relic in one month. In return he would bet his salary if successful. And the story after that, everyone knows it. What is this crazy speed? How can you restore it so fast? In Ju Hian's hand was a golden kite shining as if nothing had happened. It was really annoying. Without much words, Ju Hian returned the pen to Jeha and forced him to work. Don't complain and start your work now. In return, I will pay you but in the future, not now. At least this guy still has a little conscience. Just then, Edward called again, boss, someone wants to talk to you. Edward Hapgon was known as the king of wealth, he was one of the big investors in the relic market, he is currently called as a mediator connecting relic users with each other. Juhian knew well that people like him had a lot of important information that even he didn't know. On the other side, Edward said that he was very interested in your performance. And the things that happened to Young. How would you feel if I introduced you to some not so bad jobs? Very quickly, the two talked about the main thing. A dungeon appeared in China. You just need to quietly take that relic from the Chinese government and give it to me. If everything goes smoothly this time, I will treat you as a VIP customer. Don't think you can fool me. I thought the fish would bite, but remember Ju Hian is the main character. Do you think I'm that amateur? I know everything about you, old friend. Now tell me who ordered you. In response, Edward also didn't hide anymore. Although this is not a normal request, I will also reveal it to you. This is an order from General Kira. Kira Clark is a general of the United States. And also the director of the issues related to Relic. She is a terrifying woman with the nickname War King. As soon as he heard that name, Ju Hian turned 180 degrees and wanted to run away from the mission. But before he could say anything, Edward continued to explain that Kira wanted to collect the original relics. Of course, the relics in China were part of them. If I can, I'll turn the car around and take it. A few hours later, the two of them were on the plane. Meanwhile, Jeha was still wondering why they agreed and got on the plane so quickly. They should have had some time to think. Irene also came to greet them after arranging everything. She said that this was her private plane. Because all the airports were damaged after the relic event, so this was the only way. He saw a beautiful girl and smiled brightly, greeting her and asking about everything. The answer he received was very cold. He found out that she was Irene Hyun, the sister of someone he had scammed before. As soon as he heard her identity, he bowed his head down to his feet to apologize. Please don't hand me over to Hyun. Irene didn't make things difficult for him, but it was because of Ju Hian that he shouted and cursed Jeha a few times to scare him. He said that his grandfather was stupid enough to be a burden. He even asked for a month to fix a relic. Just looking at his face, he could see the words lazy written deep and clear. This man is very important to me, so you need to work harder if you don't want me to tell your brother. After being scolded by Irene, Ju Hian also talked about the main thing. He said that Jeha was part of the solution to her problem. From now on, you should learn how to use relic from us. The unlucky relic is a parasitic relic, so I can't completely separate it from your body. The best way is to learn how to control and use it while I think of another solution. I control the relic while Jeha uses his social skills to manipulate. You can learn from both of these ways. The next morning in Macau, currently two-thirds of the Macau Special Zone has turned into a tomb. Its entrance is near Taipa Island while the bridge to the island has been cut off. The only way to get inside is by boat. As he was observing, Jeha ran up in panic and said that his relic had been stolen. The system announced a cunning thief was targeting your relic. Hey, rope, catch that bastard quickly, now just sit and shake your legs and wait for the rope to bring the thief back. Because when he knows how to move, he can't escape even if he runs to the sky. Seeing that the rope didn't come back, our job was to go and check what it caught. At a bathroom in the airport. Inside, as expected, the rope had turned the thief into a coconut worm. With his deep knowledge of two generations, Ju Hian just glanced and knew that this girl used the relic Medusa. She works for the government, is it that Medusa will turn people into stone if they look into her eyes? Well, play with anyone but with me, you can't, kid. Before being cursed, Medusa was known as a woman with gorgeous hair. So if you want to use the relic Medusa well, you have to become an adult first. Now loosen up a bit, rope, I need to interrogate a little. Inside, it was like two perverted criminals threatening a kid. After many minutes of interrogation, Ju Hian also got a rough idea of the current situation. There were about 20 kids like this sent here. This proves that Kara really wants to understand it. This relic is definitely very useful. 
so why wait any longer and not steal it, huh? As for this girl, I guess I have to shut her mouth. As he said, Juhian took out the Hammurabi code stone. Now listen carefully, if you dare to mess around with us again, don't blame me for being cruel. After scaring the girl, Juhian turned away and couldn't be cooler and didn't forget to shout. To get back the stolen relics. The thing to do now is to find a way to get inside quickly. By any means, we have to get that relic before the US excavation team finds it. On the other hand, some people like Linda and Thomas of the CIA also appeared in China. Inside, they were very angry with the news they received from Vivian. They shouldn't have let this kid join the team from the beginning, stupid, useless. Losing all the precious relics, isn't that a bad job? Hearing that, Vivian was very angry, I said I didn't mess up the job. I was robbed, not stolen. But after saying that, she realized she was playing stupid, remembering that the scary man said that if she said or dared to mess around, she would suffer pain. But after Linda's sweet words, Vivian finally told the truth. There were two men in, as soon as she said the word and, the power of Hammurabi was activated. This pain was so terrible. The pain that the man mentioned was being gullet. A few days later near the entrance to Type Island, two people Juhian and Jeha successfully infiltrated a warship by disguising themselves as sailors. However, Jeha was still worried because most of the boss's relics had not been fixed except for the crappy relics of the blue-haired girl. A starship fleet, yes, you have to be like this to be called a fleet. I allow you to pass. The sky suddenly darkened and a voice unexpectedly rose, it must be caused by the relic. Just then, another sailor ran over and shouted for the two leopards to quickly go over and help. The ship was in an emergency situation. Fortunately, Juhian had multilingual skills, otherwise the two of them would have been exposed for sure. Right now, in front of the bow, countless monsters from underwater attacked the people who dared to enter. They were throwing something like poison. A snake is biting me don't shoot it and explode it. Just like that, chaos broke out as soon as the ship approached the territory of the relic. Contrary to the people who were pale on the other side, Juhian felt a bit disappointed because there were fewer monsters than he thought. With these guys, he didn't even need to use the relic. However, a new problem arose. The ship was losing balance because the sailors were possessed, or more precisely, they were all controlled by the relic. Mr. Jeha was the first time to conquer the tomb and saw the scene, it was only to pee his pants. The people over there were already scared, but the relic kept threatening them too. Well, is there any better way than running now? Juhian had a plan. When those fools were dealing with the monsters, he would take the opportunity and activate the relic. With those who were controlled, maybe he just needed to use this one. Those who are controlled by the relic, all of you realize your stupidity and lick the floor. As expected, the whole ship now turned into dogs after he used the folding pen. But he hadn't been happy for long. Juhian had to endure a direct attack from the relic. He was the one chosen by the crow. He explained that the rumor about the human being chosen by the crow had spread among all the relics. Just like that, while the boat was heading straight for Taipa Island, Juhian didn't forget to take the opportunity to get more information from those relics who liked to talk a lot. Why don't you tell me more about that crow? He guessed that the crow who saw him as a toy was quite famous among the relics. Before that, the ancient Egyptian relics also knew about him. Then, after a few simple taunts and the stupid intelligence that the author gave him, the relic quickly blurted out the true identity of the crow. He said that he was a sacred relic who was very respected with the power to swallow enemies and absorb their strength. He was a very strong teammate, but then he suddenly made a deal with humans and betrayed the relics. Countless relics were swallowed by that crow or turned into slaves for humans. But he didn't know that the power had pushed him into the pillars. As soon as he heard, Juhian remembered that the tomb had killed his entire team. It must be the pillar that he mentioned, it was not a normal tomb. I thought he could swallow relics, so how did you imprison him? With a cheerful tone, the relic continued to tell as if he had achieved a feat. We tricked the stupid humans when we showed them something better than the crow, they didn't hesitate to betray. Like that, we sealed the crow and killed that human. And now go die, the second wave of monsters has begun. Although they had killed many water monsters, human strength was limited. The monsters kept appearing continuously while there were only two people who could fight. They didn't even care about the others and attacked Juhian crazily. For these guys, just one hit would kill them all. But something was wrong, the relic was broken. So there was no other way but to run as fast as possible. He was Admiral Kazaru, we couldn't fight him. On top of the cabin, two people were temporarily safe because the monsters hadn't found this place yet. 
but the important thing was that they didn't have any relic to fight anymore. While they were depressed, it seemed that someone brought relief supplies. Those bastards were relic robbers, right? As soon as he saw the knot of Vivian, Thomas moved his boat closer and jumped onto Juhian's boat. Of course his goal was to take back all the relics that were stolen. Without much words, he swung a stick at him, but it was like grease on a cat's mouth. This rank irrelic would soon be mine. I said to hand them over, but something seemed wrong. Why didn't you fall after that hit? So from the cool attitude on Ju Hian, he had to run like never before. And his shirt was torn as soon as it was touched. It looked like a steel pipe from the outside, but it was actually a relic sword. If you ate one slash, you would surely die. So there was no other way but to use you. As soon as he thought, Ju Hian took out the silver kite. If you're good, come in. He also followed the move with Thomas who was rushing in. You probably don't know that I always get lucky by blowing away enemies. Activate the power of the silver kite. So Thomas was naked and didn't care about fighting anymore. Of course with that result, the stick that was now owned by Ju Hian turned into a relic, the Sword of the Night Sinra. Relic consumes rank A, just as Jeha also found a rescue boat and continued with the mission to enter the tomb, ignoring Thomas's screams. According to Ju Hian's instructions, just go straight and you'll find the way in. But very soon after that, the others continued to follow, stop that bastard. The people of the CIA were chasing after them to get back the relic and also find the way into the tomb, so try this first and see how it goes. Ju Hian used the relic rope to attack one of them, the one chosen was Linda. Because she was busy driving the boat, she was easily caught and thrown into the water. So what will you choose now? Save her or leave her to the water monsters of the relic? You bastard you must pay for this. Not long after that, in an area inside the island, you have found me, if you want to have me, you have to sacrifice something worthy. Come here and satisfy me, look at the face of the main character, does he look like he will compromise with him? Of course not, I will show you how sharp I am. The story after that, anyone can guess, the relic was quickly defeated by Ju Hian's sword, the map of the treasure of the west. A rank irrelic, with this treasure map he had traveled all over the west to collect treasure, he had explored the North Sea under the order of the Emperor of the Ming Dynasty. With more than 60 boats, he also traveled all over Southeast Asia, through India into Africa. This map recorded all the treasures he had passed by. And now it might be the beginning of a scam. Macau after the tomb was erased, at one of the hotels Ju Hian was discussing with his brother about making a copy of this map. However, that was just his intention. He was really worried about delivering a fake product. No one dared to be sure that this rank A treasure was worth the risk. We will be paid a lot if we deliver it. Nearby, Irene also agreed with this thought. It was best not to create too many enemies. But through Ju Hian's story, what he did was completely necessary, especially as it was also a part of the plan to solve Irene's problem. Now she tried to put her hand on the relic, marking all the points related to her bad luck. Along with his command, the relic began to show bright spots. The first point was Turkey. It seemed that we needed to go there to deal with the problem of the unlucky relic. Even so, he was still worried. He couldn't change the fact that the fake surrender would disappear after a period of time. By then, the two of them would be doomed. What we were facing was Karaklak. She would hunt us down to the end of the earth. Contrary to him, Ju Hian had a completely different thought. He guessed that she would hunt both of them anyway. Kara didn't know why, but she wanted to take all the relic maps. She also owned the Columbus map, which would record all the information about the tomb and the relic there if she marked a location. It meant that many tombs in the world were in her hands and Turkey was one of them. She would take all the relics that others had, even Irene Hewn. Kara could target her relic, because the unlucky relic was parasitic. She would use every way to get it, from kidnapping to extortion. I didn't know what the limit was. And so, after a storm of rain and wind, Ju Hian successfully gained Irene's trust. I didn't even know if he was lying or telling the truth anymore, people. He just knew that Ju Hian believed that this time the power of the god of bad luck and the money of the Hyun family would be his. His plan was to provoke Kara. She was near Macau and when she found out that the relic was fake, she would lose control. That was when I showed up and explained everything. Then she would ask to meet me and I would find a way to destroy all the original relic she owned. The plan had to be said to be so bad that Ju Hian heard it and felt like he was going to die. That night at a CIA headquarters in Macau, he said that the tomb had closed even though he hadn't found the relic yet. She should scold her subordinates when they brought bad news from time to time, not to mention that agents Linda and Thomas had been arrested by China. While cursing, someone else outside announced that there was news from General Kara. 
On the screen, Kara told everyone to cheer up because we had the relic. Although the plan failed, I used another way, but I'm also quite sad. I really wanted you guys to complete the mission, but the CIA rank failed easily. But when I made a request to Edward and he succeeded, the deal was about to take place, Kara explained more. What you need to do now is to investigate the name of the extremely good relic user. I'm really interested in the strong ones. A few days later, Jaya easily completed the fake map and gave it to Edward. Then Edward quickly gave it back to Kara. There was nothing chaotic throughout the deal, proving that no one realized it was fake. Meanwhile, Jaya continued with his relic repair work. Some relics that Jaya often used in the relic map of Trinhoa were fixed. Irene's practice didn't seem to go smoothly, but since she was new, she could understand. Right at night, after receiving the bonus from the Kaaba mission, he went to eat as much as possible. Because not long after that, everything was exposed. You bastard, you dare to betray me? Do you know what you did? Edward quickly came to Jaha with a gun in his hand. He explained that the relic at General Kara's place suddenly disappeared and she was hunting for his head. But through Juhian's words, it turned into the fact that those people abused the relic and made it disappear. But the important thing was still behind. When the relic disappeared, some people also disappeared with it, and the Prime Minister of England was one of them. Is this really over? Jaha was worried and looked at the mastermind, but surprisingly, he was smiling like a villain. As Juhian whispered to Jaha, this was a great opportunity, because Kara always rushed into trouble, this was the best time to trick her. He said and then went to Edward and asked him to connect to General Kara for him. He knew that the old man was afraid of death, so he quickly explained that he could help. I didn't tell you to call to give some stupid explanations. Finally, Edward agreed to call Kara. After being scolded quite badly, the phone was also transferred to Juhian. I can't believe I can talk to you like this. I heard you played with some of my people and took away the relic. Would it be wrong to say that you are responsible for this? But to his surprise, Juhian on the other end of the line didn't deny it. But it doesn't feel good at all to be accused like that, does it? Juhian explained. My job is to get the relic back and then hand it over to Edward. Right now I want to help, so I tried to contact the general. I heard about the Prime Minister of England. Such a big thing happened, so I guess you and Edward won't want to work with me anymore. It's terrible if a newcomer like me, someone who has the talent to use the relic, doesn't know what to do to make a living in this fake world, right? To put it briefly, I can find the Prime Minister of England. I heard from Edward that you own some original relics. I will activate the hidden power of those relics to locate the Prime Minister of England. The two men next to him were amazed with their eyes and mouths wide open, but they didn't know that this old man was actually just a scoundrel and a swindler. So you say you can use the hidden power of the relic. As expected, when in danger, people easily take any life buoy. The deal was done. Kara would let Juhian use the relic with one condition, that he had to go to the place she specified and not bring any other relic with him. Now you can sit here and rest, Edward. As soon as he finished the deal with Kara, he turned around and scolded him. What about me then, boss? I guess I can rest too, right? You can follow me and then fix the rest of the head. A few hours later, Kara quickly called Juhian to a place. It was a hotel near the hotel where he had stayed before. Although she told him not to bring any relics, of course Juhian didn't listen. He disguised them and brought them with him. This had to end quickly because for a dominant user, changing shape wouldn't last long. After entering, there were a few people from Kara who came to guide them. Are you Juhian from Korea? Just like that, everyone quickly arrived at the place where General Kara was waiting. I don't see you guys bringing any relic, so it seems like you listened to my order. Looking at the person opposite, Jaha couldn't help wondering why such a young person had become a general. Then the three of them also got to the main point. On the table were three maps that Kara owned. The pirate map of Barbarossa, the world map of Anaximander, and finally the map of Columbus. Now show me, you play well or you'll get shot. Along with those threats, Juhian asked to borrow a pen. Anyway, she saw that I didn't bring any relics. What else can I do? Then he slowly drew strange things inside the relic. The thing that he explained was the necessary step to activate the hidden power of the map. Countless ancient characters were written inside and he explained that this was the tomb character, which is also called the source language of the relic. The relics like to talk, so of course they also had their own source language. After a few minutes, everything was done. With this mantra, the hidden power of the relic map will be activated, or just that much according to Juhian's words. In fact, the mantras and the hidden power were just a scam. What he just wrote down had nothing to do with finding the Prime Minister of England. 
Before coming here, he had determined his location by the map of Trinhoa. Along with the worried face of the tree, the result was finally there, the Prime Minister of England, he was in the Sahara Desert, give me the paper and I will write down the exact location, you have to hurry there and search because he is in the middle of the desert, contact the nearest base at this location, we allow you to use the Relic Explorer to find the Prime Minister of England immediately, and the story after that is that the gun barrel was pointing right at his head at our house, your business is not over until the Prime Minister is confirmed safe. The two of you have to stay here until the Prime Minister is found. My people will do it very quickly, so why don't we talk about the relic language while waiting? Although he didn't want to, after a while of threatening, Juhian also decided to let out a little trick. Or that was all that the tree people heard. He started writing the language of the relic on paper and explained. At the same time, there was also a subordinate who reported that they had found Prime Minister Anbeck. Although he was quite weak, he was not threatened with his life but don't think that you will be released because of that. You will have to cooperate with us until we understand how to activate the hidden power of the relic. Oh really? Responding to that threat was Ju Hian's face that couldn't be more casual. Because what he just wrote was the relic spell. All three pieces of the original relic of the tree were sinking in a sea of fire. Quickly put out the fire. But something strange continued to happen. The subordinate of the old man suddenly went crazy and smashed the original board in front of the horror. I have to smash this original board first. Some people went crazy and didn't listen to orders to the point that the tree had to shoot. She guessed quite sure that this was caused by the relic. But isn't it too late to know now? Juhian, he is the culprit. On the outside street, a bunch of people were looking at the two crazy guys soaking in the water tank. To be exact, the two of them escaped by crawling through the drain of this fountain. As soon as the explosion happened, Juhian gave Jeha a relic to escape. As everyone saw, the two of them were teleported to the fountain and escaped successfully. The relic they used was called the Ink of the Parisian Painter. This relic was a bit ordinary, but it would become very useful if there was an artist nearby. The explosion was caused by borrowing a pen from the tree. Juhian swapped the real pen with the relic pen of Shakespeare. The thing written on the headboard was a command that made the relic scared. On his way to the general's room, he also tried to chat with the two guards and learn their names. He wrote the command using their names, in a language that none of them understood. For the hotel receptionist, her fear was pushed to the extreme, so she threw a bomb into room 202. While Smith and Evans were terrified to see Ackling appear from the relic headboard, they thought the general would be in danger if they did not destroy them. Back to the present, Kara was also contacting Richard. I heard you can use the relic recovery. My relic is severely damaged, so I need to fix them when I return to the US. Of course, generally, there are indeed a lot of relics that need to be repaired lately. I also just received a request from the TKBM group and am fixing them. Oh, then I think this is also the same guy who caused trouble with TKBM. If we don't hunt him down, he will surely get in our way in the future. However, in response to Kara, Richard was very confident. Soon, in general, Pandora will be activated and ordinary people will not be able to use or own them.